Okay, we are back. So we are up to tab number 14, Public Works. we have been so patiently waiting there. So, ladies and gentlemen, is Commissioner King back? We don't want to get, forget to get him zoomed back in. Uh, maybe he doesn't, you're right, maybe he doesn't. Um, okay, so public works, which is, like I said, tab 14. Do we have any questions on public works? I would just like to say, great job. You guys are the... Madam Mayor, on the uh, public works, Yes. I just want to make uh, public notice that I gave everybody an uh, email over the weekend. I corrected email yes. this morning with the paving list for the, uh, the balance of this year and next year uh, for all the streets that will be paved to each of the commissioners. Yep, thank you. And it was updated to include Normandy. Normandy from Providence to what is it from Providence to Saxon? Or a little less than that, right? I think. Yep. Okay. The only thing I have to say, Mayor, is that nobody's, our buttons aren't working. The request to speak. All right, hold on. Then just go ahead and say, but they are they aren't working. So. Okay, buttons Should aren't working. Want us to reboot. Okay. I'm also gonna and, and commissioners check your um, check your power level. I'm down to 42 percent, and we're gonna run out. So if you have a, um, we go back to the old fashioned now. That's right. Put our sign up. Commissioner Bradford, do you want to? Do you have something on public works? Yeah, there was a couple things. Um, this is another one. Workers' compensation is down. Um, do we know what happened here? How are these not? Me too. Um, also, Me too. power utilities was down. I think you guys are the only department that's down. How'd you guys do that? Let me uh, let Miss Kipolo address that. Uh, the worker comp. How are your you utilities to. down and workers comp and all these other things down? Okay, I, I can't answer the utilities, but um, let's explain workers comp. So what you have in your budget before you, and remember, like Mary said earlier, this is a working document, so we're still working through a lot of things. What is in your total budget for workers comp is our projection for workers comp for the year. However, we are looking at reallocating workers comp costs. So um, I believe currently it is based on a percentage. Percentage of wages is how we are allocating the workers comp. Um, yeah, Ken has re reworked at the okay, workers good. comp. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. For this workers comp based on the total number of the employees and the number of the employees in each department. So some department they increased the uh, um, the number of the employees uh, last year, like um, code enforcement, they increased some um, parks and recs, they increased to 17. So their workers come goes up because they increased the number of the employees. And at the same time, the total number of, um, number of the employees increased. But some other department, they never increased their number of the employees, so their workers come goes down. But we are currently working on the new way to calculate the workers' comp, so this number, workers' comp allocation, will be changed after this workshop, budget workshop. So the way we're going to allocate the budget, uh, workers' comp will be based on the risk rating on each position, calculate the number of the um, employees based on the risk rating, that's the 50 percent of the workers' comp um, allocation. The other 50 percent will be the average of actual claim on each department. So a combine of those two will be allocating workers' comp. Okay, because it and and I hopefully understood it correctly. So with workers' comp, comp there's classification codes for every position Correct. in every department. Correct. 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 And some positions are higher risk than other positions. Correct. Yes. And some, like your admin positions, cost you drastically less. Correct. But it's a standard across the industry wide of this person's going to be this much at this rate and this person's going to be this much at this much rate. Okay. So public works, 
wouldn't that be at a higher classification or is it under admin? It will be on the new calculation. This is not factor in this is that risk rating like you're talking about. So like this one based on just a simple number of the employees. Not so it's that. not based on each individual classification? Right. No. It will be. No, right. it, but will, it be. will be, yes. Right. right, because that classification can either drastically yes. go up or drastically go down. And I'm assuming we get audited every year by our workers' comp insurance that yes. generally they say you either get a refund back or we owe you X, Y, Z additional amount of money. Right. Yeah, very familiar with that. Yes. So that's where I was a little confused on some of the departments that I would assume have a higher risk have right. gone down and some of them have right. gone so up. In the past, in this city, they never calculated based on the, those classification. Never? Mm -hmm. Never. Dear Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a first for everything. Good Lord. Okay. Um, well, you know, utilities. all of this is, this is all down? the general fund. This all comes out of the same checkbook. So right. it's all trued up at the end of the year. So it may seem like a huge mistake to you, but it's just an, an estimate of where the money is going. But it's being corrected this year. It will be a better estimate, but it doesn't really change. We still pay the bill. We pay it correctly. Um, I, I, yeah, I get that, Mary. I mean, I know now that you're explaining to me that it was never done per department and per classification code, mm -hmm. um, it makes sense, especially and, since I just went still, through this and I understand a little bit know, more on it. It was compared to like what the bill was the prior year. So it wasn't like a completely random number. We just decided to do the math. You know, it was based on prior year bill. So you the know. prior budget was not accurate. So when I go back to my budget book and I'm looking at the numbers from prior years and it says this went up or down X, Y, Z. Um, well, I guess we could look at the you know year what I'm saying? year and so, the actual. So what I compare it to is what I received in the prior year budget book mm -hmm. line item, which makes it even more confusing because if that's higher and then I'm looking over it this year and it's lower, if the classification code hasn't changed, mm -hmm. it should technically be with a higher increase of your payroll higher. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm getting confu got confused because, mm -hmm. but what you're saying is they just did one classification code all the way across for all these years in our budget book. No. No. No, the classification code was correct. It was how they allocated it to each of the departments. Oh, good Lord. Okay. So your classification code was correct, but the allocation to each department was incorrect. And this year it will be corrected, so next year we should have it correct. Next year will okay. be even better. Right. Well, yeah. next year in your comparison. So when we have this completed, when you look at last year's to the 23, you're going to see some significant changes, and we will say that's point in time we made the change. And then looking 23 to 24, that would be a, a better comparison. Right, and it's a more accurate charge back to yes. each department. Okay. Um, I'm still curious. How did you get the power down? Utilities are down $15,000. Do tell. It's, the budget was based on um, prior year's actual, and the current year we're in, the budget was higher. So we're trending to be closer to the 160 as opposed to the 175 that was budgeted this year. Okay. Peer review land accusations. Engineering services peer review <coughs> appraisals. What do we what is that exactly? What what page are you on? Oh I'm sorry. <coughs> or what well, this might be questions. into the next one. I'm sorry. This is um peer engineering. This is public work engineering. I'll I'll hold it. Okay, we're, no, it's all it's all part of public works. It won't. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were. No, no, just keep going because nobody else is on the board. Just keep um, going. Engineering services appraisals. It was on the on the budget. Is this a? It says peer reviews, land acquisitions. Is that going to be on each budget year? Oh, that was twenty-one thousand or twenty thousand for peer reviews, and five thousand for land acquisitions. 
This last year it was for some uh, property to rehab a lift. No, oh, wait a minute. The, that was Deltona Water, sorry. <clears throat> Had to do with the um, Lohan property, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so we're anticipating more of the same coming up, more, more types of that. So we don't need that, or we do need that? Well, we're also looking at properties that uh, are undevelopable or rather more challenging to develop because of high water table conditions, uh, properties that have been um, uh, permitted to build on a number of times, and then for whatever reason, generally, again, high groundwater table, it's been determined that the properties just aren't cost effective to build. So we're looking to purchase some of those properties and then turn them in using tree mitigation funds to, to make them passive parks and, and reforest them. Okay. Sorry, guys. That's okay. Commissioner McCool, did you want to jump in while she looks? Yeah. you want to talk on that same subject? Okay, thank you. Madam Mayor, okay. thank you. Uh, do we have a list of those by any chance? Mr. Peters, I don't have passive it. parks, acquisition, land acquisition, any in land trust that we have for budgetary reasons? We, we have a list of all of our city properties. Um, okay. You want it? I do. Okay. Me too. Um, go ahead. Me too. Hmm? I want the list too. I asked It'll go out to everybody. Thank you. Um, um, so, do we have a list of requests for these land acquisitions and who makes that determination and how's that process? I'm just needing to understand how we get that property and while we're talking about it. I just need a short elevator answer, but I need to understand that. Ms. Wallace and I just uh, in the last two weeks have reviewed a, um, a number of parcels that are being offered to the city and uh, you know, some of them are pretty interesting. They, uh, most of them either are adjacent to our own properties we have now. Uh, some of them have nice stands of tree, but the wetlands difficult to develop. So uh, we're going through the list and see uh, which ones would be appropriate for the city to consider taking. Is there a property on Abbey Terrace on that list, do you know? Pardon me? Is there a property on Abbey Terrace on that list, do you know? Uh, Does it sound familiar? To the best of my knowledge, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Commissioner um, Bradford, you, you find yeah. yours? What is the ADA detectable warning maps? What are those? At the intersections where the um, sidewalk enters the pavement, mm -hmm. uh, we're required to have a detectable warning map. Those are generally the um, truncated uh, truncated domes that you see there. Rust I was things. like trying to visualize, like what is it? Did you, you know what, I, they're like kind of rust colored and they're on it's the, the I didn't know what they the were called. The truncated domes are for, for blind people to have a cane. And when the cane hits the truncated dome, they know, they know they're either entering the street or they're entering the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Learn something new. Mm -hmm. Happy to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> question, question while she's looking on that same, uh, on that same page, um, right underneath there, you have tire dumping, $3,000. Is that where we pick up people's tires or is that our own tire dumping? Those are generally tires that we pick up in That's the right of way that have been dumped. So we're, we're paying to have those when people throw out stuff on the side of the road or dump a bunch on the on an empty lot. That's our cost. Okay. That was a thousand more. Hmm? That was a thousand more dollars from last year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, people are. You know, they don't care. They just toss and dump anywhere they want. It's mind-boggling. Anything else? <sighs> that is. It. That's it. Okay. Commissioner King, nothing? You're good? Okay. All right, so we will move on now to Parks and Rec <coughs> tab 15. And I don't see anyone from Park and Rec here. No, so. ma'am. Uh, Mr. Manning is dealing with a, um, um, Illness. An illness situation, so he was unable to attend. So Ill with an illness. I will try my best to answer your questions, and we'll get we find it back to you later. Commissioner Bradford. Okay. Positions being added. So 
Does this include all the new positions or were those positions still put on hold? The positions in the budget are the positions that were approved last year minus four positions. Um, a field supervisor and three field technicians are not going to be um, in the budget for next year. We um, went through a process using national standards and determined that um, the budgeted amount was about four, two, four people too many. I'm sorry, we eliminated how many? Pardon me? How many four. did you eliminate? Four. Four. We didn't fill them this year. Okay, next page two. What is 4J's dumping versus Waste Pro? Because I thought we were using Waste Pro for everything. So what is 4J's? It's under 523401. It's another landfill. 4J's is the other landfill in Sam Sula, right? Is there, why are we using them? Yeah, well, yeah, we're mandated to use waste pro, so I'm just trying to figure out why we're using 4Js. Um, in public works, go ahead. In public works, they're used for um, tree, when they cut the trees and lawn stuff, things like that. It's probably the same thing then for mm -hmm. debris? Most likely. Waste pro has debris. They won't give us, Waste Pro does debris pickup. They don't give us a, uh, here, here's, here's my thought on this. I'll get where I'm getting. We have made it mandatory that businesses use Waste Pro. They're not allowed to have any dumpster other there than Waste Pro. Residents have to use Waste Pro. So, you know, like we talked earlier about taking our water coolers out and making sure we do the same. To me, it's the same thing. So if we make everybody else use Waste Pro, I think we should be using Waste Pro. Um, we should be. Um, so this AC quarterly maintenance and inspections. Huh. Now this was also in general, general government as well. The $14,000, is that what yes. you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, because um, we had that listed in the other, the general government for maintenance and inspections as well. Is the 14000 specifically for parks? But wouldn't the other maintenance be under that as well, you would think? So that I believe the AC that you see in this line item would be for the buildings at the parks whereas the general government is City Hall. I have it right. I think so. <clears throat> I'm just checking. Did we find that we have, the, do we have this number one, do we have the same company at the parks? And number two, are we having the same problem with our AC units at the parks like we do at our building here? Uh, from an AC standpoint? Yes, sir. Um, most of the replacements that we have identified are in the fire stations. Um, because there, most of the fire stations were in the 2004, 2005 range, um, and they're just due for replacement because of age. Um, and that was the largest proportion of the uh, AC units that needed to be replaced. Okay, so, that, so then the ACs that are being replaced aren't necessarily lack of maintenance on them. Correct. It's, okay, because before it was said that it was well, because of lack of maintenance. Well, it's a combination of both. Okay. So, do we know, is it the same company who has the same contract for both City Hall and the fire station as the parks? Because I guess my concern is this, if this company is not maintaining properly, then we need to look at finding my, a company for the money we pay. My understanding, we're using one company and we're evaluating them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want Commissioner McCool to go? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Commissioner McCool. Okay, I was lost for a moment there. Okay, um, we have taken away four positions. That's what we're reading here. Yes, Okay, so there are 10 positions open, however, correct, right now? 
again, point in time when that was provided to you. So I'm not sure of the current status and if there were 10 at that time. So it could have included that four. So we'll say there were six and there the could ten, have been the some ten included the four. It, this does? It includes the four. There were six vacancies at the time. And unfortunately, we're having a um, pretty significant turnover rate in the Parks and Rec Department for various reasons. So um, I'm not surprised that at that point in time that there were six vacancies. But we are aggressively filling positions best we can. And are you being successful, Mr. Peters? Do you find we're hiring more now? Pardon me? Did you find that we're hiring, we're able to fill these positions now? Um, it's a struggle. Um, what we're finding is that uh, we go through the hiring process, we do the background check, and there are things in the background that make them unacceptable to hire. Um, and so, um, so you know, as Ms. Wilk pointed out this morning, you know, part of the reason we need to uh, have our own, preferably have our own fingerprint machine it has helped speed up that process. Uh, but yeah, we're having trouble. Um, you know, we, we have people go through the interview process. Um, this is not just Parks and Rec, this is everywhere. They go through the interview process, we put out to hire them, and they have gone on to another job or they're not interested anymore. Uh, so it's, it's a struggle, but it's. Um, you know, we're doing better than a lot of our peer cities in terms of our turnover rate, um, but it, it's a difficult market out there. Is that like not regarding us personally, right? But the, that high amount of turnover, does this have to do with wage and salary or does this have to do with qualifications? Are we just having a hard time with um, that? I think it's the nature of the generation. Mm -hmm. um, I read an article in Saturday Wall Street Journal, um, which was astounding to me. Um, a lot of companies have what they call the 90-day rule bonus. Um, what they have found that if they can keep an employee for 90 days, uh, they'll usually stay for a year, um, and they give them a $1,000 bonus for staying for 90 days. Um, so these are, you know, like McDonald's and mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the kind of people that we actually compete against. Um, it's, it's a tough market, um, as I've told you all before. Um, I have talked to people, um, Seminole County has 35% vacancy rate, uh, City of Maitland has a 30% vacancy rate, and um, you know, it's just, it's a tough market out there. What is Deltona's vacancy rate? Um, if, you're, if your point in time analysis said 55, and I counted seven of those are either held or not being filled, that makes it 48, mm -hmm. um, 48 out of 100, 350 employees roughly is about one in seven, so that's 15 percent. Okay. Um, I was doing that on the fly, I'm, and I'm, I'm sure I'm fairly accurate, but. Commissioner Bradford, did you want to continue and then I'll ask my other questions? Yeah, we can go back and forth because i got a couple more. Go ahead. Okay. Under, um, <clears throat> Five two four six zero three. We have that we are going to replace the shade cover at various parks: Dwight Hawkins Gate Park, Van Park, West Crown, and Dewey. Eight thousand dollars. We had five thousand dollars in last year's budget for the same item. When I rolled down to page five, five two four six one zero, again have replaced shade structures and Dewey's back on there again. This time it's very. It's at twenty five thousand. Um. A number of the uh, items were not completed last year uh, in the budget, so we put them in this year's budget. Um, I know Mr. Manning just shared with me some of the pricing that he's getting on some of these facilities, so I know we're proceeding with them. <coughs> a lot of it's supply chain. Uh, some of these items that we've been trying to replace, for instance, uh, somebody broke the uh, <coughs> brand new playground slide over at Festival Park. Uh, it was a uh, one piece of plastic on the uh, slide. It looks like we're going to be about three, four months getting that part. Okay, that's not my question. My question is, under five two four six zero three, I have eight thousand dollars to replace the shade cover for Dewey. 
Under 524610, I have to replace the shade cover at Dewey. Because that's a stage. Yes. I'm going to say, are they two different areas? Yes. Okay. That's what the I stage is the more expensive one. And then the lighting, the LED lights. How we're replacing those LED lights annually, I thought the, uh, is that FPL or Duke out there? I thought we the, had a program uh, LED that. lights? Hmm? That was part of the analysis that we're having ABM do. Uh, the initial indication is that from an energy uh, efficiency standpoint, it's not justified to replace the LED light. The existing lights are quite functional. Yeah, it's fifteen thousand dollars a year. It looks like to thirteen to fifteen thousand a year. Yep. Um, Arbor Day trees fund trees and plants under five two four eight zero one. Um, is there a reason why can't we take the Arbor Day out of the tree fund? Like I'm noticing the Arbor Day in each budget. Um, why can't that be taken out of the tree fund? I would need to look at the uh, enabling uh, resolution ordinance on the tree fund and see if that is allowed. Um, my recollection is the tree fund is for the purpose of installing and maintaining ourselves, not mm -hmm. for giveaway. giveaway. Not but for I the giveaway of the trees. That. I will double check that. Okay, so we're just taking that out of each one. And then what's the sun at the center, the summer concert series at the center, $15,000? It's mm -hmm. under 524801. Um, which one specifically? The summer concert, it's a concert, concert, concert series. series at the center. Right. What we were trying to do is um, put some new programs together uh, so that our residents will be able to. Uh, take full use of our facilities, and these are some of the programs that staff has put together uh, to, in that effort to open up our parks for our residents and give them more opportunities. Okay, so one thing I noticed is there's a lot of activities under Parks and Rec. Um, do any of these events go under the center since they're to be held at the center? So uh, that's where I'm a little confused because you have events on here that are specific to the center but they're on parks and rec budget, but when I go to the center's budget, they're not there. Yes, ma'am. Um, these are programs that are actually being offered by parks and rec. Uh, what we need to realize is um, the city is rather limited on facilities. Uh, for instance, if we have a basketball program going on at West Crow, uh, there's not a whole lot of opportunity to use it for other purposes. And so the center is actually an excellent facility <clears throat> would it be inside or out uh, to have some of these programs? So, so um, what we're doing is we're utilizing our facilities best we can. Um, you know, right now we can't use the uh, community building down at Lakeshore uh, between the condition of the building and the lack of access to the project, uh, uh, this draw project out of the river. Um, so what we're finding is we. We have limited space, um, and you know it. Um, you know, Mark Manning and I have had some very substantive discussions about you know, some programs that we can't do because we don't have the facilities to do it. We have even reached out to the school board over at the middle school on Enterprise. Um, you know, we were hoping that they would keep part of the old school where the gym is, and we can make use of the gym but they're tearing that entire building down for parking. Uh, so that's not available, but we are having some talks with the school board about possibly using some other gyms around the city for some of our programs. Okay, so that didn't answer my question, but I appreciate the information. Yes, ma'am. Um, You're asking do you why we can't have that program out in the center? Yes, sir. Because as I said at the very beginning, this is really a parks and rec program. We're using the center just strictly because it's an available facility. Um, next page. <laughs> I'm looking at all this food for staff and volunteers. Okay, these are different entertainments. 
so I don't think we had in prior year's budget the food that we do for staff and volunteers. So that's fine. I know it was added this year, and it is an expense um, that wasn't in there prior. The page seven. We have five two four eight zero one entertainment, additional infrastructure, decoration, equipment setup, drive-through holiday parade, law enforcement services, holiday displays. So I've got twenty-five thousand for additional infrastructure, thirty thousand dollars for the drive-through parade, fifteen thousand dollars for law enforcement services, and holiday displays ten thousand dollars. I believe that in works at a meeting, this commission stated, and I might be wrong that we wanted a parade this year. Yes, ma'am, and we just talked about that this morning, about rewriting that section to make that the parade. That was the intent. Um, but yes, you are correct. Um, we, I had said we needed about 50,000 for the parade. I think if you add all that up, it's a little bit more than 50,000. 80,000. So yes, ma'am, we are looking at doing the parade. Okay, so we're doing a parade. Is that in lieu of, in addition of having your lights out here in a drive through or we're just doing the parade? Because this um, is I like $80,000. I'm hoping that we can do both. I'm hoping we can do both, have a drive through um, like we've been doing for the last couple of years, and then having a separate parade over on Delta and Boulevard. So if we <laughs> didn't add the additional infrastructure, um, we're able to perform or perform. We're able to do a drive-through like we did last year without any additional expense because we already have everything there. So all of these funds will be allocated over to the parade back on Deltona Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. But how can that work? Because you're looking at entertainment for $1,500. You're looking at the additional infrastructure, decoration, equipment setup. So you would do nothing at City Hall except have lights, correct? Um, I need to work with Mr. Manning on how we're going to coordinate all that. Because, because a drive-through holiday parade for $30,000, that would, would that be setting everything up? And then you would take the 25000 from additional infrastructure, decoration, equipment, and setup mm -hmm. for this. That would be out. And law enforcement has to be both. for both. Right? More the parade than the um, drive through. I, yeah, I don't know why. Unless you have a one night where you do an introduction for the drive through, you shouldn't need right. law enforcement for the rest of it. But one way or the other, I mean, you're probably shaping 5000 off the law enforcement, or even take 10000 from law enforcement and put that to the 25000 So you're looking at 35000 that you can allocate out of this for a parade if we don't. if we don't know what the in additional infrastructure, decoration, equipment, and setup is. Correct. Right? Because the drive through holiday parade, that should include all the lights and all that stuff, right? And the yes, floats? Well, a fair amount of it still out there. Right. Um, so. Okay. So, to be clear, then we would s budget for a holiday parade. Yes. That was, what, that was what came out of the strategic planning process. Okay, so we have consensus for a holiday parade, and we need a dollar amount. You said fifty. You're gonna take fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. So we're doing fifty for the the parade and thirty thousand for the drive-through lights. Yep. Next. Um, next line item down, 524-905. City run camp at West Cryo, STEM program camps. We got 75,000 and 10,000. Have we pursued any partners, grants, anything to go along with these? I think they're great programs, don't get me wrong, but I would love to see us incorporating business partners and other community groups to assist with this fee. This is $85,000 just on those two items. And then we got another, you know, the athletic departments. So I would love to see a way to get our businesses involved more with these camps and these groups to offset these funds. Just a thought. Um, next line item on 524906, dumping to brush, concrete, and other materials. That's new, hasn't been in line on it before. What is that and why is it in parks? 
Because, because you have the dumping of 4Js that we brought up before, right? But wouldn't that be up under 4Js? That, that that's what I'm saying. That's, you're looking up. at over $8,000 in, in Well, I know um, just recently we had a, um, a dilapidated boardwalk and some other trash that was over on the side of Dewey Boxer. We had to get rid of it, and we got with Waste Pro and had it taken out, and it would come out of a line item, so I should say. So this will be eliminated? Hmm? Is this going to be eliminated, what you're saying? Is this going to be eliminated? You just said you had it at... That was this year. Right. This is for next year. Right. So if it if happened it this year, we shouldn't have to dump it again. Time. It's not reoccurring unless you plan on somebody dumping it. It recurs every year. We have dumping needs all, every year. It sounds like we have a dumping problem. problem that we need to figure out how to get it under control, um, which sounds like a hard thing to do. Um, Commissioner McCool and Commissioner Sosa, if you have any of these same questions, just jump in if they're on these same items. Because you guys are both on the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to need to back up, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to the summer camp. Okay. You, you've allocated $75,000 to run a summer camp, and the summer camp's, what, about a 12-week program? What What are the costs of the $75,000? What, what are you taking out of there? Um, I need to get a full breakdown for you, and I'll do that and send it out an email to all of you all. Um, we have had a really successful summer uh, program. Started out, I was a little concerned. Uh, we, our goal was um, between 70 and 75 kids. Started out about 65, but last week it was up in uh, the low 90s uh, because we have been providing uh, programs that other people are not. And the parents have heard about it and they started bringing their kids over to our program. I'm really proud of what our Parks and Rec Department has done this year with the summer program, and my hope is that as we go forward in the future that we can be able to expand that even more. Once again, go back to our availability of our facilities. Okay, because you charge 90 bucks a person to attend the summer camp times 90, so that's generating about $8,100 a week times uh, 12 weeks. So you're making about almost 100,000 off the program, and it's costing 75. Um, do, do you pay for all the activities in that out of that 90, or is that additional charges on My top? My understanding it comes out of the 90. Comes out of the 90. But like I said, I will get a full accounting for you. Okay. Um, my second thing was, I saw this year, it looks like we're gonna do a 5K here in Deltona for 2023. We put $15,000 in for timekeepers and I guess a company to come and run the event. It's under 524801. I had that marked as well. Yeah, I died. Why don't we just hire a company that does it, let the company do the charging and let the company do their thing? Do they, do they not do that instead of us spending 15K on it? And there used to be the companies that they would do the 5Ks all over. They do the signups, you pay them, you do the whole thing, and we provide the location. And I mean, it's going to be some cost for us. It is some cost mainly for you know, uh, traffic control right. and policing. Um, but you know, these are, um, I used to know the name of them. Uh, they're an organization uh, in West Volusia that does these uh, running events, and they do quite a good job. In fact, uh, we've had some internal discussions about reaching out to Sanford because um, long term, um, the route around Lake Monroe is almost exactly a marathon. And, uh, you know, you could have it where it starts in Deltona and goes to Sanford and be a half marathon. You should use the River of Lakes Heritage Corridor and get in touch with those people because that's exactly the route that you're talking about. Yeah. And you can do all that. And, and I can't remember the running group that used to do it. Yeah, the, the one in DeBerry. I yeah, and there, the there was a younger, a, a, like a, a tiny blonde about. lady. They that also do running events in Mount Dora and yep. other locations, but they're very good. Okay. So, I mean, if we, if, if we just offered them the ability, it wouldn't cost the city anything. They would be responsible for well, all the cost. The city would cover the cost and, like I said, maintenance of traffic, having the cones and, and things like that. Okay. And 
then the last thing was I had a very lengthy conversation with somebody about this yesterday, and it's a skate park right there on uh, Cortland Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, it shows that we have skate park concession, $5,500. What is it that we're providing for $5,500? That would be under 525210? I think what they do is they buy snacks and candy and they sell them to the kids at the skate park. So that's a re that pays for itself. Yeah, I think they make a couple bucks on it, but it's mostly to get a lot of the kids to buy snacks and drinks. Okay. So. Now, one of the major concerns about this park, it's never open. It, it, we the, the the skate park itself is always locked, and there's hardly ever an attendant. It's only open a few hours during the evening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've, I've got residents that live in that area that want full access to that park as far as the skate park park. Mm -hmm. You can go into the parking lot and play on the playground, but there's mm -hmm. never an attendant during the day to where they can utilize the ramps and so forth. So I'll follow up on there. If, if we could open that want. park to, to the general public for the majority of the day, that would be great. Yes, sir. I'll follow Thank up. You. you good? Okay, Commissioner Bradford, did you have any more? And Commissioner McCool? Unfortunately. Um, just a cur just curiosity. We budgeted forty thousand dollars from janitorial supplies. Twenty five thousand dollars more than last year. What's going on? That's a lot. We the budget is based on actual expenditures. Um, I'm trying to remember what facility it was, but uh, we've had a real problem with people uh, stealing the paper towels and the like out of the uh, facility. So what are we doing to curve that? Because we can't afford $25,000 a year increase in yes, toilet paper. I think it goes back to our conversation earlier today about cameras. Uh, we need to be able to have eyes on our facility so we can see when people are doing it. We need to have eyes. I thought we had, yeah, we've got eyes at the parks. We just gotta make sure we utilize them. So this is this is where I bring up, I start saying what's going on. Um, fireworks, we're up $10,000 from last year's budget. Sanitation trailers, $3,100. Kids activities, only 150. Bounce houses, up 800. Uh, the band, up 200. Iced watermelons, up $650. What are we gonna have shortage on watermelons? Um, Golf cart rentals up 1,300. Now, those don't sound like a lot of numbers, but when you're more than doubling items, that's when I say, really, um, are we a little overinflated on the budgets? And it's not just parks. I'm gonna say, as I went through the, bar, the, the book, like I've literally marked every one that's went up and down, and there's items on this budget that aren't up 10, 15, 20, 30%. There's items on this budget that, that are up 100 to 150%. Now. I really have a hard time seeing this is just a price of increase of the economy, which the economy keeps getting blamed on. Um, law enforcement services were up 5,000, which um, kind of shocking since he kept our services the same here. Um, food and staff again wasn't on there, entertainment. Um, we covered the parade. So I guess going through the budget, not just for parks, but for a lot of departments. Commissioner Bradford, I would point out, uh, if you go back to the beginning of the budget, how many programs that we are starting next year that we don't have the current year. There is a cost for providing these additional programs and additional events. And so the fact that we're having these additional programs results in additional costs and some of the other items. So we're trying to you know, program in for these additional events and et cetera that we're having. Now, you know, we can scale back the number of events and programs we're doing and it would reduce that cost. But, you know, for the, uh, the benefits that we will derive from those additional programs and events, I think the cost is well within line. All right, I'm not, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not talking just this, this park's budget. Um, 
throughout the whole budget, a lot of these items have more than doubled and tripled. So I'll, I'm not just talking parks right this moment. Well, so I, I would also share that I'm sure everybody been watching TV. You know, groceries are up 40 percent. Other things are up you know, 30, 40 percent. So the cost of getting supplies and that type of thing are higher now uh, because of inflation. So I just remind you that uh, even though our growth and the our income is only, revenue is only about 3 percent. The cost of uh, the supplies and everything we buy is substantially higher than that. Yeah. I mean, even our seed is up $114,000 out of a $235,000 budget. Our what? Um, landscape seed and sod on page 10. Literally, $235,000, which is up $114,000. So. Okay, that's all I got on this one. And Commissioner McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to go back to um, Festival Park, if we could. What um, page, ma'am? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, back at uh, <sighs> we can just go back up to. I mean, page four. Just okay. Festival Park in general <laughs> here. We're talking about repairs of that. Um, replacement parts, are we still waiting on, people are like on the, the zip line thing, are we still waiting on the parts for that, Mr. Peters? Yes, ma'am. We got uh, two zip lines at the Brooklyn. We've been waiting on the, uh, the parts for those for quite some time, a couple of months at least. Mm -hmm. um, as I referred to earlier, Festival Park, we had a, a new playground equipment that was broken. Uh, vandalism in the replacement part is, is uh, taking quite some time. Can it's you tell frustrating me? frustrating having to shut down playground equipment because we can't get through. Do you have a number of like how much vandalism we're having to repair? Is it? It's, it's weekly. Weekly. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear that when I'm talking about and banging on the drum about cameras, right? This is for general consumption. For cameras, this is why. First of all, it's resident dissatisfaction thinking that the parks and maintenance aren't doing their job, and that's not the case. We're replacing stuff. It's getting broken again from vandalism. So that's why I'm asking for cameras all over the park so that we can identify and hold responsible the parents or persons responsible for this. Yes, um, ma'am, I would just say that um, Mr. Manning has had, with the help of the Sheriff's Department, has had a, a very good success rate in getting to the perpetrators. Uh, we had a couple of kids in four-wheel drive driving through one of our parks. Um, they were able to apprehend both of them. Um, you know, we, we've had a good success rate in taking care of that. But the other side of the problem is there's certain Areas of vandalism, you can't put cameras such as inside restaurants. I'm sorry, because what? You can't put cameras inside of restaurants uh, because of privacy issues. So there's certain locations that it's hard to have eyes. Now, if you got a camera out there, you know that we vandalized between six o'clock at night and the next morning. You can kind of narrow down the list of the number of people who went in that restaurant during that time. Okay. Last thing. Do we have a aquatic weed or do we have there at Festival Park, um, the, like the dock, you know, it's kind of grown up. It's, is there a reason that we can't maintain that to plant free, like coming up on the dock? Is we would need to check the permit and with that dock we put in. Uh, sometimes the permits from the uh, regulatory agencies are very restrictive as to what we can do. And then other times it's not. So I will make a note to look at the permit on that and see what we can do. Okay, because we just had resident <laughs> concern regarding, you know, the overgrowth on the actual dock. Um, if you could check into that and get back, that would be fantastic. Um, also, I wanted to, um, because the question was budgetary wise, at what point does it not become feasible to keep replacing the stuff due to vandalism, a high incident of vandalism. It's sad to say, but does that piece of equipment need to be changed out with something a little less 
you know, indestructible because this is just replacing, 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 you know. And I think long term, Madam Commissioner, long term, one of the things we got to look at is um, where we perch certain facilities versus other locations. Obviously, if you have a park such as West Crow with a lot of people around, mm -hmm. there's less likely you're going to have somebody damaging the playground equipment and, and something like that, as opposed to Festival Park. Festival Park is, is a unique place, but it is not a whole lot of uh, visitors out there, so there's opportunity for vandalism. Mm -hmm. And we do have cameras out there, but, um, you know, that's one of the things you got to take a good hard look at, you know, where do we invest our money uh, that, you know, you keep eyes on it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's certain parts that I would not put a high-end building in because there's just not anybody out there and, you know, the likelihood to be damaged is much higher. Okay, I understand that. I understand that. Um, I just noticed that eight thousand dollars in there too on page four at the very top for camera maintenance and repair. Eight thousand dollars for existing, right? That's for existing, right? That doesn't count any new equipment. That's correct. Okay. Um, so we're set on. It's now been said in a public setting and on record. I want that to be noted regarding our parade this year. We will be having a traditional parade. I'm happy to hear about that. Um, and that has been set, correct, Mr. Peters? Pardon me? So parade has been set this year. We have agreed on having a parade. I don't know if we have a date set, but um, I do need to advise it's my recommendation, um, much as the chagrin of some of you all, that I believe the parade needs to be during the daylight hours and not at night, and this is for safety reasons. Um, you know, we do not need kids running out on the road at night with low visibility. And uh, so I, th I think the daytime would be a much better uh, option from a safety standpoint. Well, that was the impetus before, right, because we had an injury and in even I would not be opposed to that um, as long as we we do that. Um, the I know past history, I believe, the parade was usually the second Saturday of December, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and then just the outlay, capital outlay replacement, 850000 Do we have any, like, carryover from last year for that, for, from Parks and Recs? Pardon me? The operating the transfer out of capital replacement, $850,000. I'd have to check to see what's being carried over from last year. I okay. don't know off the top of okay. my head. I'm set, thank you. Okay, so I have a few. Um, page two, new recreation software, rec track, $50,000. That's, <laughs> That's being removed. What are we using now? Uh, a Tyler product. So we're, that's what I thought, we're using Tyler now. So are we upgrading to this? No, are we not doing it? We are not doing this. So that needs to be out of the budget? Yes. Uh, we're on page two, and it's 523404, oh, new recreation software, rec track, $50,000. So, Stacy, what? We're taking that out? We're removing that, yes. Okay, let me. There, there's our parade right there. <laughs> Okay, and we're staying with the Tyler product that we have now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, next, let's see. So in every one of these items, we have law enforcement, um, law enforcement costs. The law enforcement costs for our special events are above and beyond the contract costs that we have, correct? Yes, ma'am. Is there a total extra law enforcement costs that we have? At, for a, an amount above and beyond the contract that you can provide for us for the last three or four years. I know it's gonna be skewed by COVID because we really didn't have any events, but maybe the year prior to COVID and then looking at like this, this year, because if we're gonna be looking at our contracts, we need to be looking at all of them. And just out of, and not that it's good, bad or indifferent, it doesn't matter. I would just like to know what above we're paying 
above the con contract in law enforcement services for our, our events that we're covering law enforcement for. And then I know we charge entities that do events for law, law enforcement, and there should be a breakdown as to what we're eating for that and to what, what they're paying for. Um, then, ah, let's see, where are Madam we Mayor, here? Madam Mayor, on yeah. that, um, you know, when the city designates some, something as a city event, then the law enforcement usually falls on the city. No, I understand. I understand that. But okay. what I'm, I'm looking at, we're looking at the we're looking at the 5K run, right? And so, if we're looking at that, we're going to pay the law enforcement. The the run company isn't going to pay the law enforcement. We are, and that's with with other events that we have. I would just like, and, and like I said, this has nothing to do with. It's for information only because it's part of a budget process that nobody thinks of unless you see it in a line item. It's easy to say, let's have concerts, let's do this, let's do that, but we have to supply above and beyond. This is not our staff. This is a, con a, a contract, just like with the city attorney. When we asked the city attorney to, to work on the union negotiations, and that ends up being more than, we were asking why our rates are high with certain things. We have to look at those additional expenditures. So I'd like a breakdown at your convenience, nothing now. Um, next thing, when we start looking at um, page five at the top, we're looking at uh, laser grading, planing for Dewey Boster and Van Park. Explain to me what we're gonna be doing at Van, and because there was discussion of laser grading at Dewey, at DuPont, and there was a discussion that the flooding situation on DuPont's fields are part of the reason if we do the grading, the dugouts are still gonna flood. When we look at Van Park, Van Park has historically had some issues in terms of, uh, in the past, private organizations going in there and grading their own little situation into the wetlands and so on and so forth. And it's a shame that no one from Park and Rec is here because you don't even have like somebody else that can answer some of these questions aside from Mr. Manning. Um, because my, my concern is how are we on Van Park? Does it still flood? If it's still a problem, why are we laser grading that when we're not doing DuPont Lakes? I just yeah. would like a clarification on that. Um, if we had indicated at one of our last meetings when we were talking about uh, DuPont, um, I said that part of the reason we didn't proceed with the laser grading was because the field needs to be regraded for drainage and we need to pave the parking lot. Uh, Bam Park is even worse than that because the field needs to be regraded and the groundwater table needs to be dealt with and the parking lot needs to be graded. So then why are we spending we, money on laser grading? We will be grading? revamping this portion of the budget so that uh, we will put more money toward DuPont this year to do the grading and the parking lot and then we will be looking at BAM Park for the future as to what we can do to uh, rehabilitate BAM Park because the, uh, the field is in pretty rough shape. Uh, it's got excessive graze on it. Parking lot is extremely rough. Uh, so um, this year we'll deal with DuPont, and then next year we'll take a look at what we can do with Van Park. Okay, and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just okay. want to say thank you for that because I know when, when I, I did say speak, next year, I mean 23, 24. When I did speak to our city manager, he did, did did give me that explanation, but he also said when that the report comes back from the study, that DuPont will be taken care of. Correct. Yes, sir. Well, and the reason I'm asking that is I know that historically Van Park has been a problem. And not that, not that any of this stuff shouldn't be done, but if we're gonna apply one set of standards to one park, another park has the same or worse issues, we need to apply those same standards. I agree. Um, so a what's lot of budget? So, hmm? so do we just keep the 40,000 in there for DuPont? I mean, is that enough? So from what you're saying we is we're still doing DuPont, but we still need to do, you know, get Van Park up. So what's the actual amount needed? We're gonna rewrite this section so that the work needed to do DuPont Lake will be in the budget for the coming year. And then for the 23-24 year, we will put a program together on how we can deal with Van Park. With Van, Van Park needs a lot of work. I mean, it needs it from the parking yeah, lot well, to the uh, buildings to everything there. We, we may have to take a good hard look at maybe repurposing Van Park. Um, it may be beyond 
was reasonable to regrade and all. I know there's certain commissioners on both sides of this issue, so um, it probably needs to have some neighborhood meetings and discuss you know, how we want to repurpose um, Van Park for the future. Yeah, it's un unfortunate, but um, okay, let me see if there was anything else um, we had here. We talked about someone else already brought up the summer camps and the, oh, the skate park. Um, you have in here replacement of um, planks at half pipes skate park and you also have the cleaning there. Um, Commissioner Sosa, I agree with you 100%. You know what I mean? This this park needs to have better use, and I know that it it has issues right now, and and we have to have to go ahead and and fix what's there. And, and my point in saying all this is, you know, everybody wants something new and nice and good, but when we look at what we have, and this doesn't only go for park and rec, this goes for our buildings and everything else. We have been extremely neglectful in taking care of what we have makes our budget look good to not be doing all this stuff, but here we are. Our stuff is, some of it's great, and other things are horrendous. So I'll not support anything new until we correct the mess that we have now. And if that means, you know, we have to cut somewhere else, we have to cut. But, but these parks, especially the ones that are used, and Van Park is used. You know, and, and, and so is DuPont. We, we have to do better. We have got to do better than what's here. So it brings me to the last question on page one. I'm a little confused. Um, when you look at personnel from our budget overview here, fiscal year 2021, 1,674,000. Fiscal year 21-22, the revised budget, 2,766,700. And then this budget for 22-23 states $1,806,000 for personnel. What, what, what number are we looking at here? Because I might be, maybe I'm looking at this wrong, but 2021 actual was 1,674,413. 2021-22 revised. 2766700 and then 2223 here we have 27465 and in here we have 1806 so what is the realistic personnel expenses and is that and the 1806 and under all of personnel does that include the overtime and special pay and taxes and everything Does that equate to the 2746.5? And you don't, if you don't have it now, that's fine. But maybe it's me that's confused. No, I showed it at the next year. Mayor, we will get that number and report back to you all. I think part of it may be that the, uh, the one number is actual. And I think if you all recall that during COVID, we did not fill a lot of positions. Um, and so that 900 and some thousand may be a reflection of the fact that uh, a lot of positions went unfilled that year. And uh, so okay, just, we will get, I would we be will get curious an on that. accounting for you. And the last question I have, when you look at um, transfers for equipment, replacement and computers for 2021 is 161,800 and then it went up to 850 in the next budget and then this next one is another 850. So. I like a breakdown of that too, of what the 850 is being. Are we, are we setting that aside for ABM? Is that what we're looking at, or is that actually how, what have we replaced for those 850 thousand? And I'm looking at this. This is where I'm getting this from. Yeah. That is where I'm getting the original first thing of numbers from, and then I'm looking at your breakdown here on page one. So you don't have to get that now. I just was just like clarification. Oh, Mayor, can I jump in on that? Yes, because I, I showed we're eighty thousand over twenty-one budget for our salaries and wages and parks and rec, but then we were short-staffed and we just eliminated four positions. 
They have to explain all that. I mean, I just, yeah. I just can you break can you throw that in? Because I did have a note on that yeah, as well. Just Thank have you. A, have a breakdown from 2021 um, for the personnel and then the transfers in and out. And I just am curious to know that the, for 22, 23, the two million. 746,000 in, in personnel, does that include all your, your overtime, your special pay and all that? Is that all calculated in? Not, not for now, but later. Okay, thank okay. you. All right, um, that, Mr. King, anything on Park and Rec, sir? Okay, uh, next is the center, tab 16. Questions on this, ladies and gentlemen, and if you will see that you do not have those events scheduled aside from one or two, you don't have any events scheduled here that are in park and rec to your point, Commissioner Bradford. Mm -hmm. Because the actual events in here, the only thing we have are like trade shows and the uh, MLK breakfast. Everything else is, the events are actually seem to be budgeted all in park and rec. Right, which is a little confusing because if it's a center event, I mean, is, is Parks and Rec still over the center or no? No. Okay. Um, well, yes, well, no. A couple questions I have for the center, Chris. Just a little bit of concern here, um, being that we've been talking about maintenance and upkeep. What I don't see on there is we have very expensive dish machines and freezers and refrigerators. What service provider do we use to maintain those and upkeep? Um, different ones, like we use AC Greens for um, the dishwasher, or I'm sorry, not the dishwasher, the, um, the ice machine, the refrigerators and the freezer, and then we use Hobart for the dishwasher. Okay, because Hobart generally covers repairs. What I didn't see was any of those in here, in your budget. Correct. Where um, are they at? I don't have, I, I have some, in the budget we have um, repair and maintenance for miscellaneous items. I don't have a preventative maintenance on any of those right now. We no, don't have preventive maintenance? No, ma'am. Okay, so. I'm gonna say I'm totally shocked on that because you wanna talk about a very expensive repair, have your Hobart dish machine breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not yelling at you because I know you're probably hit with budget, 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 budget. But you know, here we're talking about expensive AC units that can cost eight grand. Try replacing a new Hobart dish machine or an ice machine or um, that equipment. When you have a Hobart contract, which I'm a little familiar with, you, um, they will come out and they will do the repairs, kind of like your elevator contract, Mr. Peters, you know, they come out and they maintain, do all that. Um, to me, that's like a no brainer that we have thousands of dollars worth of equipment and no maintenance protection program on there. That was the first thing that jumped out to me on this budget. I hate to say to add, but it's imperative. We have to add it. Um, and that needs to cover all of that. And I'm assuming the AC maintenance and any of that is also gonna be under general government or does that get put under no, here actually, as well? There was a little error in this budget. So in uh, 524-603, there are two items that missed the, um, the description. So under electrical services, it should be alarms and AC inspections. We're at, I'm sorry, 524-603. It should be at what, alarms? Alarms and AC? AC inspections. Correct, the 1600 is for the alarm monitoring and the 9000 is for the air conditioning preventive maintenance. Okay, well that makes me feel a little better, but I'd like to see that that Hobart and your machine and that equipment is maintained, because if that equipment goes down, what are you gonna do as far as food service? I mean, that's, you wanna keep the center up and running. We need to have, unless somebody's, I'm not, I'm not a good dishwasher, so if that goes down, don't call me. Um, so we definitely need to, to look at getting that in the budget, I would think. I mean, I'm not the only one up here, that's something you guys can ask for. Um, and then another thing I'm not seeing here is advertising. What, and maybe I missed it, what are we doing as far as, I mean, I see our publications and all kinds of stuff, but um, I believe we had discussed before as a commission to put something in the budget for advertising and promotion so that they can get the word out on the center. And I'm not seeing that anywhere. Is that under events? 
Uh, there was uh, some money set up for advertising last year that was removed because of um, Lee's team with the, ad the addition of Adeline and Rocco and, um, and Ruben doing a lot of our advertising for us on social medias. I mean, our, our whole go for the center is to get it out there. We've, we've got to, you know, we had we discussed before about having in the budget to promote the center so that we can get this thing rocking and promotional. You know, these guys are doing a great job as far as on the internet and, but there's, there's a lot more that needs to be done as far as promoting this. You know, we had talked about getting, I think Mr. Hearn himself had said about getting in the bridal shows and magazines and all these other things. And, you know, we're not going to move anywhere forward by just relying on social media. That's just a personal opinion. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but I don't know when it's taken out, but we always had advertising in there. Correct. And there is still money in there for the trade shows as well. There's 1300 for to attend trade shows too. That's on a separate line. That, that could be one or two trade shows. That's Correct. nothing, yeah. you know? So we want it to be so it's just like any business. If you want to make money, we're going to have to spend some money to make this successful and get it out there. You guys have done a great job on increasing the sales and increasing exposure. You know, I love that we have our wonderful chambers out there and all those, but we got we to gotta kick it up and notch on this place. Um, so those are those are just my thoughts, but I don't know what you guys feel about one getting maintenance contracts on the equipment and getting money in here for advertising of the center. Okay, Commissioner McCool. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, do you have a um, revenue YTD, Chris? Yes. So year to date, uh, two weeks ago when I was here, it was at 292. As of today, we're at 317,000 year to date. Okay, I wanna go back down and revisit that. I agree, um, it's one of my questions regarding advertising. I noticed that $500 was removed per city manager for Facebook advertising. Yes. No, the 500 is what's left. Uh, for Facebook advertising, the rest was the line above that was removed. That was just general advertising. Chris, wasn't that specific to the movie theater advertising? Correct. That was set up for uh, last year direct for Epic Theaters advertising. Do we have that still? Can you tell me what advertising platforms we have right now? Just social medias. Just social media. And our, and our website as well. Yes. We have an IG account? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a Facebook account. Correct. Are we advertising on Facebook? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so all social media, which I see that, okay, mm -hmm. on Facebook. Other uh, local media platforms, do we still or do we not have the Epic Theaters advertising? The Epic Theater uh, didn't actually happen. I think with the spike in COVID and the theater shutting down, we, we never actually did the Epic Theaters okay. advertisement. Are we doing any um, bridal expos or anything like that? Do we have anything like that in plans? That is in the plans for next year. That's why we increased our signature event line a little mm -hmm. bit because we would like to expand some of our hosted events such as a bridal expo is one big one that we Okay, like and work. I want to tell you something too that um, we had a great experience the other day, you and I did, the, the, with the county being excited about the facilities out there as well. So please know that, that it's catching on the more we go out there and we have to brand the center ourselves too, you know, be our PR department as well. Um, trade shows, I got that. MLK breakfast, who is hosting that now? I'm not sure who's host. Well, that's always been hosted by the um, NAACP. We're just mm -hmm. a sponsor for it, one of the sponsors. So our sponsorship is $3,000. Is that what that line item is? Correct. Was I to understand that the city was going to do that now, or was that still going to be done by NAACP? You mean the location? As far as I know, um, when we were talking about legacy events, one of the legacy events that we talked about was the MLK breakfast. 
So that's why it's in the budget is because we consider it to be a legacy event. How many, how many do, or, or just tell me, what is the um, amount of our legacy events that we have? Do you know? Is there a total? Because I only see here, is this the only legacy event we do at the center? Can you ask that again? Mm -hmm. Is this the only legacy event that we do at the center? I believe it is. Okay. I'm good, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Can I piggyback on that? Yeah. Since you've been doing this now, um, the MLK is right now the only legacy event. Has there been recurring events taking place at the center at this point that the city could have more of a sponsorship in? Possible, yeah. Can you please get us a list of those events? Yes. I, I have a really hard time believing that the MLK is the only legacy event that has been coming back to Deltona. Um, but that's the one we sponsor, and I think that's one, by legacy event, that's the one that we actually, I don't know, what what other events do we sponsor? Do we sponsor like the backpack drive or anything like that? We don't like sponsor that? anything else. That's what I thought. That's sad. That is sad, that breaks my well, heart. Well, let, let's talk about that, because sponsoring costs money, okay? And every time you wanna go ahead and throw money and toss and sponsor something, that's money out of the general fund. If people aren't asking for the city to be a sponsor, why would we volunteer that? I'm just gonna play devil's advocate here. If something wants to come in and is asking for a sponsorship, I'm fine with that to evaluate that. But the other thing is, are, uh, Commissioner McCool, and I'm sorry, Commissioner Bradford, I just wanted to clarify this. Are you asking whether or not the city is taking over doing the MLK event? Was that your question or did I misunderstand that? That, that was, I was trying to have that clarified. Well, I, what is the, the clarification? There, oh, well, okay, so, okay. Does the city run the center or does Joe Hearn events run the center? Who city. runs the center? The city, right? Yeah. The city owns the center. Uh, Chris Hallett is the manager of the center. Joe Hearns is a contract employee whose um, contract provides that he uh, will provide Joe Hearn events and he will assist in bringing events to the center. Okay, can you, was there a pledged amount of business for, I don't remember, for Joe's contract? Was there a certain amount of business or anything like that guaranteed to be brought in or discussed to be brought no, in? No, no, no specifics. So, okay. But Joe doesn't have the, like the, the, they can book together, right? The city, I'm trying to remember the, the relationship between the city and Joe Hearn events. As I indicated, Joe Hearn's contract, it, he does Joe Hearn specialty, um, signature events, and he also brings uh, events and things to the center. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Howard runs the center in the day-to-day -day operation. Okay, so with that and, being and said. And let me clarify, you no, know, Chris and his staff also put together events and stuff. Yeah, so. I know, I mean, I okay. know, that's what I'm saying. The, the water gets muddy sometimes. I'm trying to understand like who's bringing in what, right? I really want to understand that. I want to understand the, the role. So that's why I was asking. I understood, uh, and I'm wrong, that the MLK breakfast was going to be taken over by the city. Is that not true? That is not correct, ma'am. Um, okay, I'm just. We provide the facility, the MLK, take care of everything else. Okay. That and, and I'm gonna, and the reason I want a clarification in on that, you know, just listening to this entire conversation go on here with, with looking at the budget in different departments, we cannot take on more. We can't do what we have properly sometimes. If there's an organization that can provide an event and do that job like the 5K race, let the professionals do it. Let, let somebody do that and provide that for our res residents. The same with the, uh, the MLK thing. You know, I mean, as nice as it would be that we could do all these events ourselves, look at who asked the $75,000 for the summer camp. I mean, you know, that's great, but we have to focus on what's a priority for the city. 
and events are great. And, and, and to your point, Com Commissioner McCool, if we're not advertising only on social media, and we are, have to year to date $317,000 worth of events, somebody's bringing those events in. It's not our advertising, because you're not getting all that off of social media. So our contract with Joe Hearn Events must be reaping some good if we've pulled in this kind of money. And I'm, that contract is part of your advertising. I'm not saying that, I don't mean that, I'm just pointing that out. Like, if you have a contract for someone that's doing signature events and bringing events in, and you're not advertising at all except social media, I mean, something's gotta be bringing that in. Am I wrong here? That, no, you're not wrong, and that part of the why I'm trying to clarify, like I would like to know where the revenue stream is, right? How do we support that revenue stream? If Joe's bringing in these events, the majority of the events and the advertising that, that buy share is on him, right? He's doing that. If we are, what is our buy share and what is our advertising, like what do we need to do in, in advertising? That's why I'm trying to differentiate the, you know what I'm saying, for budget. I, I think purposes. it's very difficult to differentiate that because I think it's really hard unless you do a survey for everybody that comes in and ask them how they came in, maybe you do that. And then, you know, how many of those are personal connections by saying, you know, Commissioner McCool, you're working on an event, you're gonna do that, you're gonna have it at the center. Mm -hmm. The League of Cities had a dinner there and now the county is gonna piggyback and have July's dinner there at the center because be the last one was done there. So how much of that is, is repetitive? How much of that is being brought in? The chambers being brought in are reached by Joe, realistically. So I think it's a combination of everything. And when, when, to your point about advertising, when we don't have an advertising budget here, per se, except social media, we're doing darn good. Yeah, and I just wanna make sure that our staff, you know, Joe's his own, Joe is his own public relations media czar, you know what I mean? So what I'm wanting to make sure is that Chris has, and staff, has the advertising support that they need to maintain longevity and our book of business also, because we know that that becomes repeat business. So that was my reason for asking these questions is to understand Right, where are we pointing those dollars? That's all. Thank you, for that clear, thank you for that clarification. Commissioner Chris. McCool. Right. And you're doing a great job out there, by doing the way. Can job. I just say that? Thank you. The amount of compliments that I get for people that haven't been in there before, your staff is incredible there. I've never not had a phone call returned or had a question answered. So thank you guys for raising the bar because you really have. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner McCool, if you would like, I'm sure Mr. Hallett could provide you with a breakdown of the revenue that the center is getting uh, by who is booking and if yeah. that's something that you would like. That's fine, and I'm sure that the city staff is much better qualified than myself to, under, to say who's getting a media buy. I'm just it's, trying to make sure that they're getting their support out there. It's a tough line need. to follow. It's not really, you know, six degrees of separation when it comes to who's visiting the center and right. who is renting space. And uh, Chris has a, a, an entity that comes every Sunday and they bring 400 people with them every Sunday. So yeah. who knows what the business is that's generated from such a thing, but they provide an excellent service. Um, I would have to tell you that Chris is actually running with a very uh, small staff. Um, as we work through this budget, one of the things Chris and I have talked about um, in the final budget that you see from the center, we may be looking at having to add some people who are on call because they just have that many events some days in order for them to turn over rooms. Um, it just takes more manpower. Um, Chris himself provides a lot of that manpower. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also talked about bringing in more of the events. Mayor, as you had said earlier, why don't we have entities come in that want to make money uh, on their own and they're just renting a space, uh, providing some commissions too, and we are looking more into those options at the center. Um, so actually Chris and, and his staff have a lot of great ideas. Um, it's been a matter of working through those and talking some things out. We're working through policies. Um, we're looking for a new direction for the center than I, I think it, it has had in the past. Um, and it's really just kind of giving them uh, wings and letting them fly. And I think they're gonna be able to do it. Thank you, Stacy, for that. And, and again, uh, my full backing 
of what they do, but uh, again, there's an elephant that's running around in the room that the, the center uh, faces scrutiny all the time. It's just a legacy thing. And, if, you know, the public needs to know that we are building success out there with the staff that we have, and we want to continue to support the center for everything that you guys need, because you do mm -hmm. an incredible job out there with what you have. It's a beautiful facility, and y'all are doing fantastic. And, you know, people like numbers, and people want to quantify, and I, that's all I'm, that's what my goal is. So thank you for that. Commissioner Bradford? I'm just going to throw the elephant out there that's in the room. I think there was individuals who wanted to see the legacy event taken over because they felt like there was mud thrown on our face last year. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, we have a lot of ducks, yeah, well, because of certain awards to certain people and that were bid, that were done. So I guess I look at what happens if Joe Hearn leaves? Like, what percentage of those events, you know? Nothing is ever forever. And, you know, we've got to have diversity, or not diversity, we want to be able to diversify how we're doing that advertising so that if that one big portion that's bringing these groups, something may happen, you never know. Um, you may get a larger contract, somebody, somewhere. We got to make sure that we're still going to continue to have these coming in. So as much as, yes, he's, they've, they've done a grand job. I mean, like I said, you know, you guys have stepped up the bar, Chris. People have, I'm hearing a lot of positive on the center. We are getting a lot more events. Um, I'm kind of happy to hear you're over busy. So that's, that's a good thing. But at the same time, I don't think he's too busy to say that if we did additional advertising and we went out and did what we can to bring in additional events, that it would be a bad thing, you know, because our goal is to continue to increase the revenue stream on the center. I mean, it's a large enough facility. You still have, I'm sure, open rooms daily that we need to get those rooms, all those rooms filled every day. The goal is not one or two events. All those rooms need to be rocking. So, yes, with that's going to come more staff. I understand that. But the only way we're going to up that is additional advertising and promotion of it. So if that what if ever does happen, we're still covered and we still have additional events coming in. I just don't want all our eggs in one basket. And right now I feel that we have all our eggs in one basket. Commissioner Bradford, um, just to kind of expand on what you all are talking about regarding the advertisement. Um, you know, the center is six well off the road. Uh, when you drive by the fire station there, there's absolutely nothing there other than a small sign out on Highland to indicate that the center is even there. Um, we have looked at, uh, through Bell sign on a large sign with uh, oversized LED display board with, that had lettering large enough that you can say, this Friday night, Frank Sinatra's in town. Um, or whatever, uh, just something that said the center, I know I'm joking, Madam Mayor, um, but um, that sign is about $150,000. And we got the price too late to put it in the budget, um, but it would be a, you know, a marquee type sign that would identify the center there. It would, it, the, like I said, the, the city has a standard size LED that we allow this one would be twice as wide and twice as high, uh, so you can get uh, you know, the message out on what's coming, the center's here, whatever. It's amazing to me, and talking to people in West Volusia, how few people know that the center is even there. If they know we have a center, they have no idea where it is. And so, you know, that $150,000 sign may be worth it just to get, let people know it's there. Um, you know, part of what I told Joe and Chris early on was, you know, I wanted to work with the chamber, the Rotary, and these people so that we could get eyes on the center. And I think it's been very successful. One of the frustrations that uh, we have is the Council on Aging. Uh, they take up prime real estate in that building every day. And that is space that could be easily leased out. Um, and quite frankly, 
at times when you walk in to go to an event and you walk by them, it is not a pleasant entry. Um, I hate to say it that way, but it, it's a fact. And so at some point, we've got to figure out what we're going to do about the Council on Aging. Do you think the Council on Aging contribute to the center? That's why we are um, where we are. They got, it's about 930,000 total. We got, I think it was approximately 600 and some thousand from TDBG and about $300,000 from an estate of a lady for Mills on Wheels. Um, and so uh, what we have figured out is between the CDBG and the, the uh, estate, that if we had another facility that we put at least $930,000 into, we can ask the council on aging to move. Um, and candidly, I think Chris would tell you that he could rent that space out just about every day if he had it available. Um, and so that, that's one of our uh, areas that we're looking hard at. Um, we're looking hard at the sign out front. Um, we on whose property? Hmm? On whose property? On whose property? Um, it's on the corner of um, Martin Luther King and Mr. Cavalera's property. Um, more on his property. He has agreed to give us an easement. In principle, he has agreed to give us an easement to put the sign because the sign will also have a ground-mounted uh, tenant sign. <clears throat> so like the new heart center would have a sign, the heart center, because the other problem is the heart center is out there and there's no signage up front to indicate they're there. So this would serve a dual purpose to help the commercial development in there as well as the center. So why is the city paying for that? Pardon me? So why are we paying for that? So um, he owns those properties, right? So he owns those properties. He's selling those properties. Should he not be providing the sign number one that we're listed on instead of us paying for it and listing all his selling point? I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. This is like backwards. And I will mention district two has no sign over there to the entrance of the city. So the sign that was there for district two was removed I don't know if it was when the Wawa went up or it was taken down at some point. So as far as I know, that is our only entrance as, that as does part not of the have Halifax a sign. Crossing agreement, um, the signage the Halifax Crossing put in, uh, there was a requirement to put a city seal on the end post of both of the signs. Um, that's it. That was something that was negotiated by a previous administration. Um, the city seals are out there. You have to look for it's them. It's not the city seal. I mean, you go through every other district, and they have a marquee sign that says events and what's going on. District 2, we don't have it. So now we're going to put $150,000 to put a sign, a marquee sign, at the center no, on somebody bought, else's property. I haven't brought it to you yet, uh, so don't say we're going to. Uh, we we're going to reach out to Mr. Cavalera and see what kind of arrangement we can make um, and then negotiate something. But they um, should be paying for yeah, that for us to have exposure. Did we not? Did we buy the property from him? Yes, ma'am. But you know the problem is um, when you buy a property, you better get your um, everything you want in the contract. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't believe there's anything in the contract about us having signage up front or anything like that. Um, you know, if you go by there, you can't even hardly see it for the brush, but there is a sign for his development. Uh, that's it. Um, so, you know, we need to have some conversation with him about it. Um, but, you know, the LED sign we're talking about overall is uh, four times larger than what we have everywhere else. Um, you know, my concern with all the other LED signs around the city, whether it be Veteran Park or uh, down on Saxon, if the signs are so small that when you're driving 40, 45 miles an hour, the lettering should be eight to nine inches tall. The best you're going to get is four inches. Uh, unless you stopped at the light at Normandy and Saxon, you can't read them. Uh, the one that's right beside um, Wendy's, you have to be in the far right lane to be able to read it because the traffic going by between you and the sign completely blocked it. Okay. So I think we need to revisit all those signs and uh, figure out a better way to get the message out to our community. 
Um, how much was the sign that you proposed last year to put in at the be between? I never had it. I never got a price last year. Oh, uh, we never had a price on that that mock-up sign that was put up. Hmm? We put a mock-up sign. We never got a price on that. Oh, that wasn't that was prior to me. Uh, that was under Miss Chang. Mr. Or Cooper. Dr. Cooper. No, I think that was Cooper. Who was Cooper? Yeah. Was that Cooper? Yes. Okay. So that yeah, because he put a mock-up sign up there. That was actually going to be in the median of. Um, uh, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and one of my concerns with that sign was uh, the potential that we're going to block the sight triangle of people in the intersection, uh, and that it would be a hazard for people turning, like with a large truck, or like a fire truck. Um, I, I'm sure Ron Paradise got a price on it, but I'm not familiar. Okay. So but that one did not have any LED feature to it, it was just a sign. All right, so I'm, I'm not for a $150,000 increase in this budget for a sign, but is, does anybody else have consensus for any additional advertising other than social media? I think, I think Commissioner Bradford, that when you look at the center and that whole area, um, there's a property owner's agreement there, and the majority owner of the property owner's agreement controls what goes on there, and right now that's Mr. Cavallaro. Right now, the only other two property owners there are us, the fire station in the center, and now the Hart Group. And at some point, there's going to be a push to do some signage. Um, there has to be when more retail comes in there. So um, the, other, the other thing that was talked about a while ago was to landscape uh, better Howland Boulevard right there and put up some signature palm trees to put up something in the median to draw attention to the intersection where the center is. And that in itself is a form of advertising. And we have a tree fund. And we just, we need permission from the county to go ahead and landscape that area because we're all visual beings. And when you come in and you see something like that, that that's a form of advertising. I mean, I think that, um, I think that Chris, to the commissioner's question, um, do you, what do you feel you have in the budget? Do you have anything in there that's adequate for advertising, number one? Number two, do you have the staffing for advertising? I know that you've got some things where, you know, to go out and do calls and so forth. What is, what is the reality of what you have, what you need, and, and what's in there now? Well, the only thing we have in there right now is, like I said, the trade shows for some advertising. It would cover one or two a year, depending on the which trade show we went to. And then we have in there um, $500 for um, boosting posts on social media. So other than that, that's the only advertising we have set up right now. So if you were to have more advertising, if the commission were to, were to, to say, okay, because Commissioner Bradford is asking for that, what would you, your projected advertising budget be? And what, what type, do you have any idea what you would like to do with that? We've got some ideas. We'd have to really look into it and see where we could get the most bang for our buck, if it was Epic Theater or if it was uh, Radio Spot or something like that. But we would have to do some more research before spending the money and see where we could get the most exposure. Does the commission have any flavor of for putting a line item in for X amount of dollars for advertising in the center? And then they can come back to us or you guys can figure something out. Is there, is there any type of a consensus from the commission to put a line item in? And if so, how much? I do. How much were you looking at, Commissioner Bradford? It's going to depend on them. You know, like he said, Epic Theater is great, but I mean, if we're talking about our local Epic Theater, we're hitting our local groups. Correct. So what we need to be hitting is, like Mr. Peters was saying, he's over, you know, the rest of Volusia County. I don't, I don't even care if we have billboards going down 95 or something, but we need something that lets everybody see that we have this amazing facility, you know? Billboards might even be an option. You know, um, Epic Theater, you're hitting a, a local group. Um, we want to hit that group that is traveling in and out over the bridges from Seminole County and going to the coast. I mean, I think that I would like to know what you guys would, you know, have looked into and your thoughts on it. You know, I'm not, when I think of advertising, I don't think of you know, hitting the people who already know us, I want to hit the people who don't know us. You know, like Mr. Peter said, there's there's people in Daytona and other parts of Volusia County who's never even heard of the center. You know, how do we have this amazing facility? What are we going on, year five? Mm -hmm. And we've got people that don't know about it yet. Yeah. Um, 
Mm -hmm. We, we got to kick it up a notch. You know? And I know it's not you. We, we, we've, you know, hit not your budget. Huh? Um, so yeah, I think you can use them to answer your more question, more. Mary, that's going to be something that he's, they're going to have to, you know, give us. Um, another line item, as I mentioned earlier, that needs to be had, that needs to be put in here is your facility maintenance for your equipment. That's, Madam, that's critical. Madam Mayor, one of the things that I've talked to several staff people about is reaching out to um, iHeartRadio. Um, they will not only advertise on the various radio stations, they cover you know, virtually every genre on the radio, but they also will sponsor events. Uh, the thought being that you know, if we have a, a carnawin or whatever it is at Dewey Boxer, they can advertise it on the radio. Similar, um, you know, they can advertise the center uh, for, you know, for instance, if we do the wedding um, show, uh, they can advertise the wedding show for all the brides in Central Florida to come in and, you know, see the different uh, dress companies and uh, caterers and everybody else in one location to plan your wedding. And I mean, I agree with all of that. And I know iHeart does sponsor a lot and we can speculate all night long and mic micromanage how we're going to do advertising. The question is, do we want a line item in? And if so, how much are you, would you like to add $5,000? or Would you like to add $10,000? What would you, I mean, one or two thousand dollars isn't going to cut it. I mean, if you're what for what you're looking at and you need to do outreach, local outreach, like area outreach too, but is, let's see if there's consensus first. And and I know Commissioner Bradford, you, yes, sir. I, I, I would say if we're going to use it as a holding tab, we can put just some X amount of dollars until we get back from the, hear back from them, and then we have more precise. But just to throw a number there, I, I don't think we I were agree. informed enough. But if we can put whether it's five thousand dollars on a line item just to hold it as a placement, knowing that that might have to be increased, then we can. I, I don't have a problem with that, Rob. Okay, you're willing to do a, a, a hold for five thousand, Commissioner McCool. Yep. Commissioner King. Any comment? I, I'm not. I, I guess putting the line item in there is okay. Uh, I don't see where anybody sitting on the dais uh, has the information or the knowledge to decide how much money that should be. I think that uh, Chris and his staff and and. Uh, and our assistant city manager ought to get together, figure out what that amount should be, and then bring that back to us and say, this is what we can get for this much money uh, as far as advertisement goes. And then we can say yes or no. Okay, but I agree. Just for us to throw a number out there it is foolish because we don't know what we're talking about. So I think that we should let them do their work and then bring us information, and then we'll make a decision. Is the commission comfortable with that? Commissioner Sosa, you're comfortable with that? Commissioner Bradford, I know you'd like to see a number, but we can decide on a number once they bring us back. Or, do you have any? I don't have anything in my back pocket. Well, what, what, I, what I'm seeing here is because it wasn't budgeted, there wasn't a lot of research done on anything, and everybody, Commissioner King's right, everybody's flying blind here. If you didn't have, you know, if you didn't have a, a something that you're looking at, you can't just toss a number. I mean, you could, but it's going to be too high or too low. So are you good with a with a placeholder to come back and see? Are you okay with that, Commissioner Bradford? And then but, you can take up the conversation when they come back in, so, in terms of, okay. So we're just going to have a placeholder. We're Yes. Dollars, is that possible? Yes. Okay, then that's fine. Yes. And just bring us something back then. Okay, any other questions on the center? Are we going to have a placeholder for routine maintenance on our equipment? Yes. Yes. yes I think you. you should too. At least come back with the numbers I will. on that. I will. And then we can decide. Okay. That's for your protection, Chris. So we don't end up where we are now. Um, okay, anything else on the center? Because then we will move to stormwater, tab 17. Any questions on stormwater? We've already set, had first reading to set the rate on stormwater. Any other comments on this? It takes me a minute, Mary. Question. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay, page two, last item, 523405. An additional $200,000 increase on mowing. You know I had to ask. <laughs> <coughs> Is 
that you or me, sir? Go for it. Uh, this, this again goes back to the uh, earlier conversations about the consolidation of mowing. Uh, we're, we're still working on the areas and figuring out the, the most efficient way to move forward. Uh, but currently we're working from last year's numbers and, and the current layout, but anticipating that a lot more of the um, mowing is it going to end up coming underneath stormwater. Okay, because where I was confused was I thought um, we were told at the last budget needs to be Ms. Stacy said that it was mostly under parks. What were you, no. No, okay. if right now it's actually, it's three different departments are handling mowing, plus we have a contractor. Right, so we got the contractors, we got parks, and we have the stormwater. Stormwater and, storm and water. public and works. And, and field public operations, works. yes. And how are you guys are going to decide on who's picking what portion up? What is the total number? Does anybody have that on those departments? What we're paying in mowing? I don't have it off the top of my head. Because right here we're looking at two hundred seventy-five thousand just on this one. So would it be close to a million dollars in in mowing services? Um, I would say six hundred thousand probably in the ballpark. Uh, we, because uh, Parks and Rec has about uh, equal, if not slightly more, in mowing. And then uh, Public Works has a small amount. And then we have a contract that uh, we're hoping to take over and, and get a, do away with that contract. But uh, as we finish this mapping mm -hmm. uh, project, we'll have a total square footage of what we mow. Um, we will have, we're going to code them according to which department does the mowing and what type of equipment. For instance, ball field mowing is typically a real mower, whereas the other ones are standard, um, I call them whirly birds. Um, and so, you know, we will identify what type of mower. And then, as I indicated before, we got places where all you know, public work, stormwater, and park are in close proximity. Well, if it turns out that parks is using a real mower, they can't really do right away in stormwater mowing, but stormwater could do the right away mowing. Uh, so uh, we will, the whole purpose of the exercise is to be more efficient with our mowing so that when we come to you all next year's budget, we will have you know, most of a year under our belt and we will know how we can gain more efficiency with our mowing and be able to reduce the overall cost. Yeah, because we have a huge chunk in mowing. I mean, and it's not just with your department. It's like we just did another contract for mowing, I believe, the retentions. Mm -hmm. So. And if I may, um, uh, Phyllis was kind enough to remind me that uh, last year our Menzi muck that did all of our ditch mowing uh, was uh, damaged and, and total, uh, total loss. And so we've had to contract out for that. And just I, I believe it was one of the last couple of commission meetings we uh, you approved the contract for the um, um, privatized mowing out there on uh, for the ditches. Okay, we had a twenty-six thousand dollar increase on um, our power utility services for the Southwest Pump Station and the water utility services for the Southwest Pump Stations. So we went basically total of seventy nine thousand, but we went up twenty six thousand. Are you sure you're still in stormwater? Oh, the stormwater pump station, not Southwest. Is it SW? Stormwater. It says I'm sorry, SW. Yeah. Okay, stormwater pump. Stormwater pump. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's a four, and that's for utilities. Yeah, it's five two four three one. It says power utility services for. Um, stormwater pump stations, 65,000, and um, water utility services for stormwater pump stations, um, 14,000. That's just general anticipated increased pumping costs or electrical costs. Wow. Um, the unforeseen stormwater projects, 53,000. That's just general stuff that comes up. That's probably a low ball estimate. Mm -hmm. How much did we have this year? I hate, I don't want to hear this number. How much did we have this year in unforeseen stormwater projects? Do you know? 
Because we had, I think, quite a few emergencies. If I gave a number, it would be inaccurate. Um, I can get that to uh, the ACM, but we're looking at probably over $100,000 worth of unforeseen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's actually a low number. If it's a dry year, we probably won't need it. Somehow I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'll get my crystal globe out. Are you good, Commissioner? Or, um, yeah, you guys can go Commissioner on. McCool. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanted to go back to 52-3401, other contract services, aquatic weed control restorations um, at $40,000. Um, it's been asked of me, and I would like, while we're talking about budgetary reasons, is this chemical or mechanical removal? Primarily chemical and manual removal. We do engage it sometimes with our contractor to do uh, mechanical if it's warranted. Okay. So um, what is that percentage? Because I understand in late cleanup, I get residents ask me this, that there are some that have to be um, chemically altered because of the root systems and they're not being able to remove that way. Is that, could you please corroborate that? That is an accurate statement, yes. You typically do not want to disturb a lake bottom by pulling up the root systems. Yep. So it would be a combination depending upon the actual application, what is being proposed to be done. Okay, because there was concern regarding contaminating, you know, with chemicals. We have that question all the time. So I just want to state it for uh, the record there. Um, and $40,000, that's cheap to me after all the research that I've done looking at that is pretty dadgum good deal, whoever's doing that. That was all I had for that section. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? No more for stormwater? I just want um, the commission to know we set the preliminary rate, and at some point in this next few months, um, as we finish going through the budget, go through your stormwater projects and note what's not going to get done. Yep. So we'll move on to the next tab, which is solid waste management, tab 18. Any questions, Commissioner McCool? Yes, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I wanted to discuss recycling again. I want to understand regarding recycling, if we could, again, for people that may be new to the city or have asked this question, why are we still charging for recycling when we're not recycling? And I would like the formal answer for that an explanation of why those funds are still there because we are not recycling. China is no longer buying our garbage. There are recycling options where there is a buyer for it. So could we talk about maybe the offering of a third party recycling system because this is important. Does anyone want to speak to that? I believe our contract forbids any other recycling system to come, any other garbage or recycling to come into the city unless it's commercial. Commercial by the state of Florida is commercial recycling is not controlled by the state. You cannot have a commercial recycling contract. However, um, so commercial recycling, if somebody wants to come in and put a recycling dumpster down commercially, that's allowed. Uh, residentially, we have a contract that does not allow another party to come in and recycle. That is what our contract states. Am I correct? Yes, so, ma'am, but I will get uh, Bill Redman to give me a full reporting on it, and I'll provide that. So, okay. And then she would also like to know um, our fees have not gone up this year. We set the preliminary um, sanitation rate for, for, for solid waste, and that's still the same, correct? So um, you wanted to know why we're being charged for recycling? Yeah, and I understand, but it, I need to hear from the horse's mouth. And second, most important thing is I have a problem with the terms of our contract budget-wise that it doesn't allow for recycling because there are buying parties out there. 
We do have the ability to recycle, and cutting us out from the ability to recycle is quite BS to me and how prolific this problem is. So when we're talking about our contract, that needs to be discussed because I can call up, or, or I should say, I have Recyclops service for my private home that I pay extra for, so I know that there is a market out there. It's inconvenient, and it is like um, it needs 100 people, and there's more than 100 people. I understand that, but it's not marketed. We don't actively market a third-party recycling system. So choice is, should be to me, that either our waste provider provides that pickup service for recycling and find a buyer because there is for third-party systems or there needs to be that caveat that we have the ability to have a, uh, you know what I mean, the city can. When you offer that to a third party, the amount of people that we have that want to recycle, it would be at a truly discounted rate, even if we have to go third party. But we shouldn't be kneecapped like that, where there's not free enterprise available if you're not offering the service. Because recycling is a big thing. People are still pissed about it. And we need to offer an option there for that. And if at that, if that's not happening, we should be allowed to market heavily where people can get their stuff recycled. So that is my ask for this. Um, Commissioner, Commissioner McCool, you can do anything that you want to do. It's what you want to pay for. And if you want to go ahead and have recycling for the city and you can go ahead and do that and continue to pay for a service that's not being done, that, that's fine. And, you know, it, it is what, what was done, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, with the last solid waste contract, was to try to get the best rate for the consumer. And as you see, it's not gone up. And you can say the cost of gasoline alone and, and fuel for these trucks has gone up. And, and I'll remind everyone that the last time we put this out to bid, the commission wanted rear loaders to be able to pick up everything put at the curb because people didn't want to only have their garbage cans. They wanted a second garbage can of their choice. They wanted to put bags out. They wanted to put furniture out. They wanted to have a much bigger ask. And the only way for a, a waste company, forget the one we have, any of them, is to use a rear loader. So our requirement was a rear loading, rear loading trucks and not the ones that click on your little thing and dump it because we didn't want to do that. We wanted more than to have the automatic little thing. So you had a very limited amount of people that could do that because most trash companies do not have the level of rear loading garbage trucks that 35,000 plus residents, maybe 38,000 homes now need. That's the reality of when we put this out to bid. If we're going to be clear, we're going to clarify the entire thing for what the commission wanted, what the city asked for, and what any provider could provide. They didn't have enough rear, am I correct, Commissioner King? I see you nodding to that. They did not have enough rear loaders to service a city of 38,000 parcels. That is why we went with the company we went to and readjusted the recycling because recycling is going in the landfill. And again, the, the commission can do whatever they want, renegotiate, try to you know renegotiate the contract, do whatever, but in, understand it's going to be an increase. So, I mean, I think we need a clarification. I, I, and I get that, and that's fine. I think that the option should be presented. I'm sorry, but, you know, when we're talking about what the consumer wants, they want to be able to throw away a bunch of excess crap, right? Um, but there are people out there, parts of our community, healthy parts of our community, that want recycling recycling options and are maybe willing to pay a higher price. Um, and, you know, I we have a pretty savvy population um, as far as making those decisions, but I also remind you that we still have people that we have to warn not to eat Tide Pods, you know? So sometimes we have to do something for the benefit um, of everyone, and I just want us to look at that because recycling is important to people. If I, it's really, truly recycling. 
Yeah. If it's fake recycling and putting it in a bin to make yeah. you feel good that you rinsed your stuff out and set it there and it gets driven to a landfill, because ladies and gentlemen, not one piece of glass gets recycled. It all gets dumped. If you have a pizza box in your recycling thing, it gets thrown all in the garbage because you've contaminated it. That's yeah. the reality of recycling. I have researched this till I'm blue in the face because I hate not recycling, but what I hate worse is paying for a fake thing. I, and Madam Mayor, I agree with you 110%. Um, but the option should be out there um, and, or get the public information regarding how they can recycle because and let them make the choice because but that's still, not the city's job to to support a private company and advertise for a private recycling company it is not but it is our responsibility to make sure that the public is aware that those options exist so I don't say that we market for a third party I say that we just make them aware that there are third party options and the nine and the non-tied pod eaters can go find those options but I'm just saying it's important recycling is important who do we contract with for our internet services spectrum okay then we should let everybody else out there know that because the city contracts with spectrum we should make everyone else aware that they have like five other internet providers I'm not being facetious I'm saying the role of government is one thing and we have to look at what we're doing like how are we actually using our resources Commissioner Sosa and Commissioner Bradford I'm sorry Commissioner McCool it's nothing not directed toward you Personally, you know. I understand, Honorable Madam Mayor. Rarely that I get that torque, but this one has. That's okay. I don't know what the Tide Pods are recycling. I, I, I thought that was a welcome diversion. Thank you. I, I, okay, I think quick question. Since this solid waste is outsourced, why do we have salaries under solid waste? Who do we have that's. Do we have somebody like monitoring solid waste or something? Because we got the. $37,000 budgeted for a salary and then benefits. We, we have one person on staff that's part of uh, the solid waste effort, um, but we use Redmond and Associates, who are the ones that go out in the field and deal with the uh, complaint, monitor uh, waste per. Um, they more than pay for themselves with the fines that are levied for um, improper equipment improperly maintained equipment, uh, missing pickups, uh, and the like. So um, Redmond and Associates are the primary people in the field monitoring this. And I believe they have two people uh, out there daily uh, going behind the trucks. Okay, so why are we paying another 45000 for somebody I else? I believe we have a person on staff to handle uh, resident calls and that type of stuff dealing with solid waste. We do. Now, there was talks about putting a call center. Would that be diverted to the call center? Or was depends the call on center the nature. Of the, depends on the nature of the call. Um, you know, for instance, um, if somebody has a call complaining commercial waste, then we would address them now to waste pro. Um, if somebody has a call as to um, what type of, what size the uh, vegetation needs to be cut in order for waste pro to pick them up. Um, you know, any of those type questions, and they coordinate with uh, Redmond and Associates on fines and, and uh, complaints and that type of thing. Okay. And why do we have 50000 budgeted for legal fees? Um, we have had a history, for instance, last year, um, we had to notify all the commercial properties that um, as of this year, uh, they had to convert over to waste per only. And so there was quite a bit of uh, uh, letter writing, uh, legal reviews, working with waste per and the whole nine yards uh, dealing with irate uh, second party commercial haulers. Uh, so there was some legal cost involved. Okay, but we have that going into 23. If that was done last year, it shouldn't be here this year. Um, I'm not sure specifically what else uh, legal worked on in the solid waste field. Okay. But it is an enterprise account, and part of the reason we put some legal in the enterprise account is so that the enterprise account would pay for the legal cost, not the general fund. Okay. So it may be that 50000 will be there and never get used. 
but uh, it is an enterprise account. That, that's why we put money there in case there's an opportunity for the enterprise account to pay for part of the legal. Okay, and what would we spend $15,000 on postage for? For what? We've got 15000 budgeted for postage for something that we outsource. Can you tell me which page that's for? Uh, page two. Um, 524102. Mm -hmm. yeah, 524102, yeah. Oh, here comes Ron. Uh, uh, Mr. Peters, if I may field that. We've got, we've got postage uh, out there for more mass mailings that, you know, involve the management of solid waste containers and so forth. That's going to be something that comes down the pike as well. And that's part of, you know, our solid waste uh, uh, requirements, Chapter 50 of the uh, Code of Ordinances. Are you, are you talking about a commercial dumpsters? Yep. And, and, and businesses that are not in compliance? That's correct. Okay. And, and the door hangers, I would assume those are for folks that are maybe leave their trash can out overnight or something. Wouldn't that be under code enforcement instead of solid waste? It just depends on the on the nature of the uh, of the. A lot of times, Ron, it's the abatements. It's the people, the abatements, and the people that dump everything out there, isn't it? So sometimes it could be that. It just, and like I said, it just depends on the nature. You're correct. <laughs> and then. Okay. The, the last thing was for HR, we got $70,000 for administration fees. What, what, what gets covered under those fees? I am not sure what the 70000 administration fee is. I believe that is just part of dealing with, with employee relations. But we I mean, only this, have one employee. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the way that the um, solid waste uses the resources of the city, meaning HR, finance, I mean, payrolls funded through that. Um, so it's, it's a way of allocating costs from the general fund to the special revenue fund. Because, you know, I mean, they don't have these services themselves. It's the way that the city general fund subsidizes them. Because so it's an enterprise back. fund. So who are we subsidizing? Well, this is a um, solid waste. It's paid for as a special assessment on the tax bill. Right. So the city general fund provides services to the special assessment. So it's a way to charge them back. It's just a way of allocating costs more fairly to all the departments. It's a way, but, it's but a way if, for the city to recover. If we it for $5 million, we should have very little administrative fees. Well, Commissioner, uh, it paid for part of my salary for all the solid waste complaints you have. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> That's it, then? <laughs> oh, we need to put a couple zeros at the end of that. <laughs> there's another 45 Just thousand. telling you. Oh, there's the other 45 there, okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Ron's choking over there. <laughs> you good, Commissioner Sosa? Yeah, I, I, I'm still not really sure about the seventy thousand. I well, I, th I think when you look at when you look at solid waste, okay. So the reality is, when you get a complaint in, there's someone that takes that phone call. There's that someone that to the thirty. Right, right, right. 000. No, no, no. I know that that's it, but that's the employee. But then you have to allocate that to which department. Does code enforcement go out and take a ride well, by, and look at that and see what the problem is to see that if it, if it's either because people dump their stuff on their lawn, and then you have the seven day wait, or they dump it in the right of way because then it becomes our problem, right, Ron? And you, there's a lot of like, it's not just so easy to go and say, hey, in a missed pickup is easy. You missed my garbage, send Waste Pro out, and they'll go pick that up. But when you have dumping and you have move outs and you have all that, it, am I, I might be way off here. No, ma'am, you're absolutely correct. I'm, I'm sitting here counting up the hourly rates of everybody standing, sitting on this thing and Ron, and uh, we're 40 minutes into a conversation about the budget. Finance handles the budget for uh, solid waste, the billing and all that stuff. Now, there's a cost involved. When people call in to complain, 
you know, they may call Sandy and Sharon, um, and then or you all reach out, they give it to me, I call Mr. Redmond, uh, and then I follow up with him to see what the end result is. All that adds up, and uh, it's just a way to recover uh, the costs for uh, city staff uh, who get involved in the solid waste without the, uh, the Avalon taxes paying for it. Solid waste management is a team sport, you know. Sometimes public works even gets involved. They do. Yeah. So, as, yeah. as posted in the fact that you have $3,000 in one of the uh, accounts for tire removal, because that's what it, that's another thing that right. we have to pick up. And all the dumping that goes on on, on vacant lots F of what this conversation was, right? right? Commissioner Bradford and about dumping and everything. Somebody's got to go out there and take a look and see what's going on. Commissioner, are you good, Commissioner Sosa? Does that help you? Probably not so much, but. It doesn't help me either. I'm sorry. So, so we put the seventy thousand and the forty-five thousand three hundred on here because we actually get the tax money from the city and the county, and we have to account for it. Is that what I'm hearing? This is what the county pays us. Yeah, so the county pays us forty-five thousand three hundred. Wrong. This is what we pay the county. That's what we pay the county. Okay. Right. Tax. They, I mean, that's what we pay the county. We correct. pay the county forty-five thousand three hundred. To put it okay. on the tax bill. Right. They collect the money and they remit it to us. They don't do it for free. Legalized mafia. So, spruce up Deltona. I'm, I'm going to try to move to a positive subject on this because this we can go into a discussion. You guys can explain to me. Um, spruce up Deltona. Yearly spring cleanup for residents. That's a new one. When are we doing that? And how are we going to do it? Line item five two four eight zero one page two. I'm excited about that because I believe, as a commission, we talked about that to try to help curb some of the spring cleaning dumping. But I guess my question is: Is a thousand dollars enough? And is that what it is? Come on down. Um, in prior years, we have done the uh, spring cleanup. When COVID came on board, we kind of had to stop doing that. It became a, as Mr. Paradise said, a, uh, a team effort between code enforcement, waste pro, or solid waste, excuse me, and public works, because we'll normally find a location. Public works teams will get out there, work with the uh, waste pro people as they pull dumpsters, bring new ones in, compact down. So we definitely look forward to doing it again. It does help tremendously. I know in the past we've thought about having it at more than one location, kind of spread it out throughout the city, maybe on a couple of days. Um, maybe in April and another time in May, but we're definitely looking forward to doing it again. So I guess my question goes to this. I, I think it's a great idea. And I think one of the reason, if we go back up to page two, the second line item, 523409, we're spending $25,000 to remove hazardous materials and materials and right away. I mean, we're spending a lot of money cleaning up tires, doing this, doing that. And if I would like to see this offered, more than once a year, even quarterly, for different locations of Deltona to see if we can reduce the amount of waste being thrown at the roads in, in areas. I mean, I have driven by and seen mattresses, and I'm just like, oh, look, there's a nice little hangout, you know? But what would it be if this was quarterly? Because I know these dumpsters aren't cheap, and we have a lot of residents. So is there a way to take and move some budget around in here so maybe we could do something quarterly in a couple areas of the city to try to reduce waste being thrown around the city? I mean, we talk about blight all the time. So let's offer a place for individuals to take their large items and trash and spring clean. Ms. Byford, um, in a previous employee, um, I ran a roughly collection. We did it at the city level, not private side. We had a fall and a spring cleanup. They were two weeks each. And one of the reasons we did it is we found that from a code enforcement standpoint, it really helped clean up the city. Um, you know, if you are uh, remodeling your bedroom and you got a, a box spring and a mattress, 
uh, and you know there's going to be a spring cleanup the last two weeks of October, you're probably going to schedule it for around mid-October to do your project so you can just set everything out, know it's going to be taken care of. Um, and it's not cheap. I'll just say that. It is not a cheap option. Um, there is, from a public policy standpoint, um, it is, in this day and time, it would probably be more beneficial to the city, and I'll do deference to uh, Commissioner McCool, than a recycling program that just kind of goes to a landfill. Um, and that's something that, as we get closer to the new contract uh, time, it's probably something we need to give strong consideration to uh, because right now residents have to pay for a special pickup and um, you know you factor in a couple special pickups a year on top of the, what their monthly rate is you could probably afford to do a spring and fall cleanup um, and like I said you don't have to worry about you know, paint cans uh, you don't have to worry about getting rid of a refrigerator, you know, the, the Freon will be taken care of and all that. So I think it's something uh, for the future that we should look at. I think that, I mean, I'm definitely all for it. I, and I think um, <laughs> at least look into putting something extra in the budget for something like that because it's, you're, you're right, it's, we talk about blight and so forth, and if we do that, it gives the people the opportunity to put out their appliances, like you said, their mattresses and so forth. So if you can, again, we don't want to micromanage this, how much you're going to need, whatever, if you can come back to us. Uh, commissioners, do we have consensus on that, on, on looking at doing more than one spring cleanup? Yeah. Yes. I don't even see how $1,000 can cover your cleanup, yeah. but I, I give don't you know kudos. <laughs> I know. Commissioner Sosa and Commissioner King? Okay, perfect. So, um, Commissioner, Mc are you done, Commissioner Bradford? Um, yeah, a couple things you guys have already addressed. So, still confused on that other stuff, but I'll figure it out. Commissioner McCool, you want to pop in and then we'll finish this one? Yeah, very quickly, if I could have the, the quick answer, but during budget, I get asked all kinds of questions. One being why people can't opt out of solid waste pickup and take their own garbage to the dump. If you would please answer that question. That would be great. I know who you've been talking to. Um, the way the contract reads, it is for all city residents um, for trash pickup. Um, I can tell you from past experience that we can give people an opt-out option. Um, the trash doesn't usually end up there. They do fine for a while, uh, taking it to the landfill themselves, but then after a while it starts sitting around. Um, in the back of the house or whatever and become a problem, a, um, a sanitary problem and what have you. Uh, you know, it's in the best sense of the city to make sure that we provide the service so that the, the trash gets picked up. And I would, last, I, gotta, I would lastly like to ask too that while we're visiting our um, contracts and you're talking, um, uh, to Mr. Redman about this, that we have had some issues regarding um, having enough pickups at commercial sites. You know where I'm talking about. I've brought you several. So if we could reiterate and talk about that and, and the response time um, for that happening, that would be great. Um, Madam Commissioner, one of the things um, um, that I have in my list of spreadsheets is um, a spreadsheet that's based on the uses and the square footage and the number of seats in the restaurant, whatever, what size container you should have and how often it should be picked up. And I think that may be something that we may want to look to put into an ordinance form uh, so that, um, you know, there's some guarantees that a restaurant, instead of trying to get by with one pickup a week, that should be having three pickups a week, um, has enough pickups. Uh, because invariably when you don't have the thing picked up enough, they start putting trash on the side of the dumpster and it becomes a problem in terms of trash getting blown onto other people's property and what have you, drawing uh, rats and other vermin. And uh, so I think it's, we need to look long term in our code of ordinances at a, um, a new code with regard to commercial and how 
what size containers and how often they're picked up. And just uh, thank you for that, sir. And just to mention that probably 50% of what is thrown away could be recycled. So I'm just throwing that out there. Thank you. I understand. Commissioner Sosa. Um, going back to what you just said about the one day versus three days, have you addressed that with the issue we had from the commercial property that's paying for three days and generally only gets two? Um, I have passed it along to Mr. Redmond for him to follow up on. Okay, because I'm, I'm not sure if an ordinance, an additional ordinance is necessary. I think we just need follow up uh, if we're, if we're going to create a monopoly and make different businesses use a certain contractor that they should be able to fulfill their agreement. Well, Mr. Sosa, the reason for the ordinance is I'm anticipating a day that we have a new contract and, uh, and I have a group of seven commissioners who are not favorable to a, a monopoly for commercial pickup. So we need to have something to ensure that all the commercial haulers are following the same rules. Okay, well, from what I understand, they were doing just fine before. Point made. Okay, anyone else on solid waste? If not, we will move on to the next tab, SHIP Fund and CDBG, tab 19. Any questions on SHIP and CDBG? This is um, Mr. Paradise money in, money out, correct? Correct. Nothing out of the general fund? Even the, we have an admin? The only thing that comes out of general fund is uh, the cost for uh, administration. Uh, most of the administration is paid out of administration, but we do have one non-grant funded position. <clears throat> okay, what is our total cost, what is our total intake for um, SHIP this year in CDBG? Mary, do you have that number there? I'm sorry. I don't want to say it's the, the total okay. intake for CDBG coming up is 558,558. 558. Okay. And the ship, I don't, I want to say it's about a half million, but don't hold me on that. Okay. Because when you're looking at that, um, okay. Any other, any questions, Commissioner Bradford? <clears throat> Ron, what's job training? What we're trying to do is provide an opportunity for people to retool their skills to go back to work. Is this similar to what the um, Orange City <coughs> Workforce Innovation does? Uh, I think there's some, some commonalities. I know that we've, we've initiated conversations with uh, Daytona State. Uh, to look at, you know, administering some of that idea. Like I said, it's kind of on the bottom floor at this juncture. Okay, so you don't really have it going yet? So. No. No? Okay. And um, the grant administration? That pays for three staff members. That pays the three staff? That's the three staff. <coughs> um, Mayor? The ship allocation we received this in the first week in June is estimated to be 909,661. Um, what happens just about every year is when the state does a reallocation, they claw back some of that money and we don't end up getting as much. Mm -hmm. So it's, I'd like to say this would be great if we got that much, but it might be premature. Yeah, they have a tendency to raid and take. You good, Commissioner Bradford? And yeah, I think I have it. The acquisition rehab, those are the properties we're taking in and uh, doing, re what's the acquisition rehab? Uh, that's an idea where it's, it's similar to the neighborhood stabilization program where we buy, rehab, and sell to income qualified uh, buyers. Um, kind of like for the low income housing? Oh yeah, yeah, it, they'd all be, it's, it's a means-based okay. program. Uh, I got a lot of questions right now, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Why are we, why are we involving ourselves with job <clears throat> seeking when we have career source and other agencies? Who's gonna be doing that? 
are we staffed well enough to take that on because that's not gonna be easy. And what I just heard right now, $240,000 for acquisition and rehab, we're gonna be our own NSP thing now and we're gonna buy houses, we're gonna contract them out to rehab and then we're gonna sell them? Well, uh, please don't tell me we're gonna rent them out because I'll just stroke out right No, here. no, we are not gonna rent them out. It would be, it would be sold. Let's start first with the, 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 the job uh, matter. And that's, again, the, the city staff does not have the capacity to administer job training. And what we're trying to do is trying to get with partners that do have those abilities to engage in, in job training to maybe assist them financially in some manner so that some of these clients that we deal with that maybe aren't credit, credit worthy yet to buy a house based on you know their income could maybe go to job training so that they could you know get a better job and then and I understand qualified. that but there's a lot of job training out there right now and I don't understand I mean if you have a need to that you're afraid you're not going to be able to spend the money I get it but to Commissioner McCool's point about advertising for stuff like other things mm -hmm then maybe we need to get that out there. But I do not approve, unless you can prove to me that you're sending money to a really legitimate source. There's so much job, job training out there. And there, is so many, there are so many grants and freebies available, especially in the, in the, in the you know, service and manufacturing sector, that for us to take $100,000 of that money and put it into giving people to re-job re people, I, I'm not so sure. I, I want to hear, what, you know, career source and so forth. I mean, there's just a lot out there. And career source is, is one of the entities that I believe has been contacted with regard to this concept. Can I ask a question? <clears throat> yeah. Are it, we are we doing this because in order to retain ship funds, we have to have these programs for the low to to do the fund to retain the funds because I. I know I heard something once before, and I don't know how it was explained to me that, um, you know, I know we have to ha be providing low-income housing, and we have to be ha um, having programs. Is this part of the initiative to retain our SHIP funds? It, it is an idea to retain any of our grant fundings, whether it be SHIP or CDBG. The city or any grant recipient needs to be able to spend money. So I have a question. You got a million six here mm -hmm. is that all that's so well you're looking at nine hundred nine thousand or whatever from ship and over half a million from cdbg all free money that has restrictions to it i understand Absolutely, that yes. ship money is mm -hmm. a, you you can use it for rehabbing the houses for people that are within a certain parameter of everything, people that are, are, are low income, correct? That's correct, and that's where we spend the majority of our ship is on right. rock rehab. Is there any, so ship, ship funding is, is for those type of things? We, the city has traditionally used ship funding for owner oc rehab and purchase assistance. If we get a hurricane, we, we do deductible assistance as well. Okay, so we, we have that there. Then we have CDBG money. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> your C, most of this is, is a combination of, is, this is mostly ship, what we're looking at here, or is this ship it's, and it's, CDBG? It's, it's both. And, and the reason I'm saying that is, you know, this dais has said over and over and over again how we need to increase social service spending, we need to increase this, we need to increase that. Here we have a hundred grand for rejobbing, like <clears throat> up jobbing people, try to get them different jobs. Why can't that money be used for other types of assistance that people seem to think the residents need? Are we having a trouble getting rid of this money? Uh, right now, with regard to housing, there are some challenges, with, especially with regard to purchase assistance. It seems that, you know, nobody can, can afford the houses based on the values that are out there in the market. And it's, it's true just, everywhere. Yeah, it's it, it's it's not unique to Deltona. It's not unique to Deltona as a recipient uh, community either. 
Well, my, my whole concern is with the two things. Are we capable of, of taking $100,000 and putting this into to, you know, job training and so forth? And more concerning to me is the $240,000 for acquisition and rehab. How would we handle that? I mean, we're going to buy a house. You have 240000 sitting there. You're, you're getting nothing. <clears throat> and then rehab it? Yeah, we have the ability to do that. We've got a body of experience through the NSP program doing that. So right. it'd, be, it'd be modeled after NSP. And I, and I understand that, I, I get all that, but my concern is we don't need to be realtors either. So, I mean, I just have concerns with that down the road. Anyway, um, Commissioner McCool and Commissioner Bradford. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ron, I wanted to ask this. Um, the, okay, the $50,000 for rental assistance, that's administered by us or one of our, is this part of our giving to another entity? That would be administered by us, us. Or it could be outsourced. We have the options to do either. <clears throat> okay. Homeless prevention, the $50,000 homeless prevention? Again, the same. And it could be outsourced. That's administered through us. Are the same caveats, because I know that some of this, these funds are caveat heavy here, you know, or, so can you just point out to me, please, the ones that we have a little more, with the homeless prevention fund, the $50,000 for that, how is that administered? Uh, typically, those involve mortgage payments, okay, uh, rental payments, uh -huh. and potentially utility payments. So the rental assistance is just that, just right? Just rental assistance, yes. So, so basically, do we? we am I understanding that the hundred thousand dollars we have to use it, but we use it with the same. Um, caveats, qualifying, I guess I should say, because it looks like we have all of this money. We try to give this money away, but there is very stringent, um, there are very res restrictive and uh, um, strong requirements placed on being able to give this money, correct? You are absolutely correct. And most, you know, the common denominator is, is means-based. Right. So disaster, okay, disaster emergency assistance, that is for strictly for disaster assistance, correct? Yeah, like if we get a hurricane, yep. you know, help people out with their insurance deductibles and so forth. Right. Purchase assistant, very, very um, stringent about what the qualifications are for qualifying that is for that, right? That is correct. Okay. Same with owner-occupied rehab, very stringent qualifications that's required from the feds, not from us, correct? That is correct. Actually, the state is, is the mostly The state. Okay. Correct. Sorry about that. The state. Home ownership counseling, we have a little more wiggle room with that, right, at $5,000? Home ownership counseling, that's... Yeah, we, we, again, all of our clients that are either owner OC or purchase assistance go through uh, homeowner counseling, teach them how to budget, you know, understand what's involved in home ownership. Okay. Can you tell me what's uh, the difference here? So I noticed that under uh, 51999 on page one, which is the last line, is grant administration. And then on the second, or on the next page, there's $120,000 for grant administration. Oh, no, that's 70,000, right? No, 100,000. What is, what is the difference in those? We get 20% grant administration availability from HUD, from the CDBG, okay. and 10% from SHIP. Okay. So one of that is, is community block grant, and then the other is SHIP? Uh, I believe so. Okay. All right. So, I th you know, this CDBG round, we're looking at $110,000 in administration. Okay. And, okay. Um, Madam Mayor, or where would be the proper time for us to go back and talk about that allotment? Is that going to be at a different time? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because it's, I'm, I'm, I just want to be clear. It's six o'clock. Yeah. We still have to have a millage discussion. Yep. Uh, Commissioner okay. Ramos has to leave.
and um, we need to decide how much, you know, time-wise, how long everybody wants to stay tonight, um, and just give some sort of indication for staff and everything else. So I think that discussion that's needs fine. to be held at a at a different day, or we'll be here. That's no, that's fine. That's fine. so. I'm good with that. Can Mr. you Brown. clarify time limitations now for us? Because we I mean, we have, you know, we can be here as long as we want to be here, but uh, just saying right now it's 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, he's got to go, and we have staff that's been here, some of them since noon, so we need to just have a time. How much longer does the commission want to, to go with this? Because we have to have a millage discussion, do we not, this evening, sir? We should. Okay, well, on unless, we wanna, on. unless we want to schedule another workshop no. to finish we don't have this time up. time to schedule another workshop. And that's fine, too. Look at their dine over there. But hey, huh? Do we have time to schedule another workshop? Well, I mean, we have to have this decided so they can turn it in, right? By July 1st? Well, all of you guys down there can let us know what you think. Well, let me just say this. Um, as Mary has said several times, this is a working document. Um, <coughs> The two key dates that we need to realize is on July 1, we're supposed to get the updated uh, revenue information from the county. Uh, that, that's that's it. Yep. And then by the end of July, we have to set a maximum millage rate for trim purposes. After that, we have to finalize the budget and then have two budget hearings in September. Um, I believe the first one's the first week of September, mm -hmm. and then you have to have at least seven days or ten days after that before you have the second one. Um, so those are your four key dates. Um, what I was hoping for t this evening is once we went through what's in the budget book, that we would have a, uh, a brief discussion about millage rates. Um, we have given you all a fresh sheet uh, they show four different millage rates, and uh, staff is, based on what we've heard today, you know, there is nothing earth-shattering in terms of adjustment. So uh, we are prepared to make a recommendation on what millage rate we think we should be at, subject to nothing happening in the next few tabs, and, um, and we would like to get a consensus to move forward with developing the budget based on that uh, preliminary millage. Uh, as I said before, by the end of July, we have to set a maximum. Doesn't mean you can't go down. And uh, so um, if we can have that consensus discussion, we'll put a budget together. We will come back to you in July to set the maximum millage. And then that will leave it the option to work through August <clears throat> to get into the final detail, because there are a lot of things that you all have asked for tonight that going to take a little bit of time. Madam Mayor, and if I could ask, you, if, if, I, if I know you mm -hmm. as well as I do, and I think I do, you have some sort of running total there of the amendments Me? That, that we have. Do you have some well, sort we're of— we're putting more in than we're taking out. Right. Yeah, that's my point. I mean, there. that's the thing. We're putting more in. We're putting more in than we're taking out. We removed fifty thousand for the neighborhood center, twenty five hundred for the commission photos and rec track fifty thousand. That's a hundred and two thousand five hundred dollars. And we put in seventy five thousand for city manager search, and fifty thousand right now for the Christmas parade. That doesn't include advertising for the center. And there's something else that uh, Commissioner Parks. Bradford. No, you wanted the the. Um, the wash, the, not the washing machine, the, the dishwasher. We need the facility maintenance in for that, the that center's the equipment. One. That one? Mm -hmm. That's no, that's a protection. Okay, so yeah. So right now we've 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 put in. Madam Mayor. Uh huh. The fifty thousand that you said for the Christmas parade is yep. actually just a reallocation of funds that we have. Yeah, that's already in there. Are you sure about that? Yeah, yeah there was 80,000. Because you're still having the drive-through thing. Right, there so we had, we had That was 35,000, and then you had an additional 25, you had 30,000, and then an additional 25,000 for extra stuff. So you had 55,000 budgeted for that. So then we're not having a drive-through at all. We're not we going to do anything here. We had 80,000 total budgeted. Mm -hmm. We were going to do 50,000 for the parade and 30 for the drive-through. Mm -hmm. That's what, yeah, was that? I'm going to take a look at that. 80. Can, 
Right, but that's okay. But any which way. Um, we have 10 tabs. We have 10 tabs left. One which is street lighting and. We have 12. We have tree replacement, street light, transportation fund impact fees, Deltona Water Administration, water plant operations, wastewater plant, customer services billing, field operations, wastewater treatment plant, rib site, lift stations, capital funds. There's 12 tabs. So it is the commissioner's commission's wish, whatever you all want to do, excuse me, but um, any way you look at it, we're, even if we're going to be even, even in, even out, we're, we're, not, we're not breaking anything here right now. Madam, well, Madam Mayor? Yes. Our, our city manager said that they have a staff recommendation. So what is that recommendation? I mean, this. Um, we gave you all uh, the four options. One of them was rollback, which is 6.95, roughly. 6.8957. Yeah. Then the next level was at uh, 7.25. Mm -hmm. Then the next level was 7.55. And then the last level was 7.85. Five. You gave five, 7.58. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. What we are recommending preliminarily is, is subject to what we find out on the 1st of July. If the 7.58 is 110% above the uh, rollback rate. And so what we're going to recommend is whatever is 110% uh, of the rollback numbers as of Friday, the 1st of July. Uh, right now that's 7.58. Um, so. Um, there are statutory requirements for this. Um, under the Florida statute, the voting requirement. Um, it, for rollback, it is a simple majority. For uh, anything up to 110% of rollback, it is a super majority of 5-2. And anything above 110% of rollback requires a unanimous vote. And uh, so when you look at the spreadsheet that we gave you, um, at 7.58, um, we are maintaining a healthy fund balance through the five years projection. Um, what we have discussed today does not jeopardize that. Um, key caveats is we are showing a flat revenue because of the anticipation of a potential uh, recession or impact of it. Uh, the housing market, <coughs> because of interest rates, is already starting to slow down. And uh, supply and demand being what it is, um, you know, you can anticipate the housing values may in fact go down. They certainly are not going to be as robust in terms of going up for, for the future. Um, the budget also anticipates the uh, uh, rental ordinance going into effect in two years. Um, there's a potential that if we can get it done this fall and have it start on October of 2023, we would get an extra year of $2 million revenue, uh, which would help with the, the, uh, the overall fund balance. But what's more critical about that $2 million is that's probably what we're going to need to start putting into the, uh, the fire pension over time. Um, as I said earlier, uh, if you just simply do the simple math of, you know, we got to make up 14 million over 20 years, that's 700,000 a year. I uh, did some quick calculations. I think the real number is going to be somewhere in the 550 to 580 uh, per year, because when you pay down the debt, uh, you get the benefit of the increasing um, return, and so you don't have to have as much. So you know, I anticipate something in the 550 to 600,000 is where we will need to be annually after, not this year, but starting in 23, 24, going forward to pay down um, on the, uh, the pension debt. Um, so having the rental ordinance go into effect one year earlier than they intend the budget. That gives you two million with four years left. That's a half a million dollars a year. So we would be able to absorb the cost of the, um, the pension liability. Uh, so 
that's another good aspect of what we're proposing. And uh, so that is our recommendation is whatever the rollback is on uh, July 1st, that 110% of that would be our recommended number. And so that's where we are. Now, I would also like to address that um, several people had pointed out to me that last year I had said that my goal was to be able to go to rollback, uh, but that was before I knew about the fire pension situation and some other issues that we have uh, uncovered in this last year. So, you know, I'm a, as I have said to several people, I'm a fiscal conservative, but I'm also a, a responsible fiscal conservative. And uh, I think the responsible thing to do is to go with a rate that's lower than our current rate, uh, but um, that leaves us a healthy fund balance. The last thing I want to point out is with this year, the commission did a brave thing setting aside $12 million into a uh, stabilization account to deal with the recession. The previous finance director had told me that we lost $12 million when, our, when we went through the last recession between the revenues in 2008 and the revenues now. Um, I went back and checked that number. Uh, it was actually closer to 25 million. So even though we had 12 million set aside, um, if we would have, you know, God forbid, a recession like the last one, uh, we're going to need substantially more than 12 million. Thus, we need a significant fund balance after each of the next five years. So that is our recommendation going forward. Okay, commissioners, you have heard that recommendation by Mr. Peters. Um, we have to decide this evening if we want to continue with these next 12 tabs, if you want to schedule another budget uh, hearing on, on these, um, some of these, like the tree re replacements, the Lake Districts and the CRA, are, uh, especially the CRA is relatively, it's an in, in independent function. Um, <coughs> and the water department and so forth. So wh what we need to know is what do we want to do this evening? Personally, it's not easy taking a full day off. Right. It's not. It's not easy for us to take a full day off. I mean, I'd love to say this is my only job, but you know, the wonderful money I make here doesn't support a living. And you know, we're here. We only have a few tabs left. I say we finish it up. Commissioner Sosa, finish it up. Commissioner McCool, sure. Commissioner King, whatever, what, whatever. Okay, <laughs> and you. Uh, I'm fine, but I have to excuse myself. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so that we're going to go ahead and go through the rest of the tabs and then have the millage discussion at the end. Correct. Mm -hmm. We're having the discussion, but there's nothing that we can vote on at this juncture. No, there's no nothing we can yeah. vote on. There only can be a consensus of how to move forward. So let's carry on then with um, Commissioner Bradford. Were you good with this ship funding and CDBG and so forth? We're done yeah, with that. I, I was just going to be the devil's advocate on the job training because Madam Mayor, yes. Can I recommend we take about a 10 minute break? Yeah, let her finish up. Okay. Let her finish up on this All one, right. and then we'll That's start fine. with tree replacement. Um, Career Source did a big impact on Deltona or on Orange City, and I know a lot of um, businesses utilize Career Source to find individuals and utilize them for jobs. And it also is a good way to reduce your unemployment. And we're, we keep talking about community service, community service. If we can help them, get them training, and get them jobs, that's less money we're sending out. So I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a great idea. It's worked. It worked for you know, our state with the career sources. That's why they put them in there. And Ron, you did say we're working with Career Source Orange City to do that. I mean, their training is amazing. They take individuals that haven't had jobs and haven't been in the workforce and they, they teach them the skills and help them get placement into local jobs. And our goal here is to get our local residents working in local businesses. I mean, we're willing to hand out millions of dollars to them just for rental and that. Why not help them be able to sustain themselves, get a job, and pay their own rent? I give you kudos for taking that step. 
So I'm, I have no problem with you working with our local colleges and career source to facilitate our local residents and helping them find local work. And that's the key word, Commissioner Bradford. We both, or we need to then allocate that funding to career source only for Deltona. Right, local, you notice I said only that. Only Deltona. Local residents, local businesses, let's keep our families working local. And see, see if they'll be willing to do that for us. <laughs> Okay, anything else on this tab, CHIP and CDBG? No. Then we're gonna take a 10 minute break. Please, Liz, if you can set the timer. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you.